Okay, I think we are live. Cool. Okay, well, hello everyone and everyone who is watching. Uh, I am Oscar of Scarboo Studios, as you can see in the bottom right of uh, the screen there. And this is a 500 subscriber uh, tutorial celebration uh, stream, I guess. Uh, so in this in this three hours, we will just be going through a series of tutorials that I've planned, and I'll also be getting uh, any suggestions from you people, and uh, we'll also be addressing those. Obviously, they can't be like super long tutorials; just small things that I can uh, do in a shortish amount of time, but not too short. First thing I need to do though is to delete that live in an hour video. Because obviously we're now live, so we don't need that. So I'll just delete that. Okay, there we go. Now it's deleted. So uh, the first thing we're going to do, uh, I'm not going to wait for anyone to actually join the stream yet because. Uh, well, what would the point of that be? Because it, you can also watch this on on YouTube after it's done as a uh, video. So, uh, also, uh, uh, one of my friends will be joining us uh, at some point in the future, uh, just to add some interesting, add some more interest to the uh, to the stream. Uh, so, the first thing that uh, we'll be doing is we're going to begin by working on a uh, pinch input because uh, in a previous tutorial we uh, looked at how to create swipe input um, and so in this video we will be or in this the first part of the stream we will be looking at how to uh, kind of adapt that to pinch input uh, so the first thing we want to do also I'm doing all this all live I haven't pre-done it or anything like that uh, we're just going to be doing it all live so you can see it, any and all mistakes that I make which is going to be fun but yeah we can open the uh, blueprints first and or we'll look for our person our player uh, here they are okay so this is the normal uh, this is this is where we left it at, at the end of our previous tutorial which was uh, on a bi-directional door and obviously, for the interest of that tutorial, I had uh, disabled our swipe input uh, system. Um, so I'm just going to reconnect it first. So if I can then get over there, and of course you can uh, you can go watch the swipe tutorial on um, on the YouTube channel, uh, which uh, the URL is in the bottom right there. Sky Blue Studios Inc because Sky Blue Studios was taken unfortunately okay so that's all that done and I'm going to disable this mouse here and then I'm going to bring these up here oh we already do have them, cool okay, now go on save just to check that it's all working as it should be and if I click out first if I remember correctly and it's not working so here is our first problem I guess always fun to have those um, I'm not sure why that's not working It could be because this is now doing something, but I don't think that's the problem. But let's just delete that anyway. Nope, that's not the problem. Well, this is fun. <laughs> um, show my mouse cursor shoot, which is obvious because we could see it. Go on, let's just check the input then. Make 
this left mouse button it should work anyway but let's just do it ah of course I disabled use mouse for touch there we go that's a pretty easy thing to miss and forget about there you go so tap is working now I have to there we go okay so we can confirm that the swiping is working cool okay then uh, so what we're going to need to do first uh, to set up a, a pinch input is we need to obviously have two fingers uh, possible so first we're going to go into our input and we'll add where did that go oh right there add one here I'm going to call it finger two as amazing as that may seem and make it touch two touch there it is touch two and just save it because you have to save it otherwise it doesn't actually change anything and so now we also want to get input finger two and the first thing we want to do is we want to add a boolean bull why am i talking bull uh finger one on i guess and then finger two on okay and so then we'll just set finger one on to true and then when it's uh, pressed and then set it to false when it's uh, released and then we'll obviously do the same for true okay so now we now we can see if both are on and the next thing we want to do is so right now we have swiping we want swiping to stick with one finger we also want to change it so that uh, if both fingers are held down that finger one is a, a thing that we we pinch instead of swipe obviously so what we want to do here is we want to first check it, uh, before we before we run this we want to check if uh, finger one if our finger two is on or not because if it is on uh, not if it is on like, we want to cancel it if it, if it is on so uh, we'll check at event tick well actually first we'll turn it into a sequence uh, now we'll just do a branch because you can split with the branch if finger two is on uh, is false then we want to run through this gate of um, of swiping with finger one uh, if it is uh, true if finger two is on then and uh, and and uh, we want to check also if finger one is on so we'll just do uh, another branch here then we uh, can move this down we'll move this down here first and so now we're checking if we have both fingers on and if both fingers are on then we want to enter a new branch a new branch then we want to enter a new gate oh actually we don't even need to enter a new gate we can just check this uh, so if both are on like this then what we want to do is we need to set we need to set this to uh, finger one start we need to rename it to finger one finger one not 21 one and apparently the bit rate isn't amazing unfortunately there's nothing i can do about that because australian internet i love australian internet uh but we'll just set that finger one and then call this finger one 
I hope you can read what I am doing here. If you can't, then that uh, would suck. But hopefully, you can listen to what I'm saying if it if it is like that. And then we want to uh, create two new finger two start lock and make it a vector two D. And then another one finger two car. Lock or pry lock, I guess is what we're calling it here. Uh, so this will allow us to figure out the distance that we've moved each finger, uh, which is obviously something that we need. So we'll set start lock here to the. Uh, well, we can just duplicate this. Target to that. Uh, index 2 and that and then we set prylock for this also because obviously prylock has to be set somewhere at first and uh, now that we've set this um, we'll know where it started and on release we just need to set that we don't have to do it, worry anything about that um, because uh, the only reason we have anything here is to close the gate, which we won't need because the gate is uh, based on these two booleans, and um, we have tap, which we're not doing with the two fingers, obviously. Um, so if both are, uh, then we set, uh, we get, we use their current locations minus their initial locations to figure out uh, how far they've moved, sort of thing. So uh, what we do is if both are, then we can set, uh, what should we call it? Let's call it, uh, frame finger dist, and we'll make it a float because we do not need to worry about, uh, directions with um this uh so now what i want to do is uh we want to get we, w we need to use these a little bit of vector maths very basic vector maths to um figure out how much the player has uh like pinched their fingers in or out so uh we just uh we get their current location so for finger one we get its current location we basically we use this in fact we do use this again uh right here and in fact we'll just copy and paste that direct stuff and in fact we don't even need to copy and paste it because we already have it here but we'll copy and paste it for the uh current lock and apparently we're doing it to the way for that so bottom one is that one and this one is there because that's how it works. Uh, not prior lock. What am I doing? Start lock. There we go. Uh, and I'm just gonna mute my notifications thing. There we go. Okay. And what we're gonna do? is we have uh, this, this distance between these two, we already have the distance up here between the initial and start location of each finger. So we just want to, uh, we have this obviously, like I just said. Um, but we're not even going to worry about the threshold for this one, we'll just get the distance between them. Uh, that's easier. and. If they've got two fingers, then you don't need to worry about having a threshold anyway, because uh, it, they're doing it on purpose, basically. Um, so we have the distance between their, uh, where their finger currently is and there, right here. Uh, so what we want to do is we'll add them together. And then we'll divide by two. Because... This will, uh, this gives us the average that each finger has moved, uh, basically. And, uh, well, first we need to set their, um, 
Prilock, and we do need to use Prilock, not uh. And we'll use this one because this already has it up here. So we'll use uh, a vector length of this vector length, vector length, length, and we'll use this one here instead because we need their prior lock, and we'll just set their prior locks here. Set prior lock, set single one prior lock, and we'll just set it to its uh, location. Uh, and that will bet, that'll bet the end like it is here after we set it afterwards, and then we'll uh, after that we'll set finger two prior lock. Oops, start prior, and we'll set it to its current location. And so using this, we have the average. This is the average the fingers have moved. Uh, we'll then add a new variable called pinch uh, speed. We'll get this here. Multiply by pinch speed. As this will get us, uh, we first want to um, we want to compile, so we have our variables, and we want to set this pinch. We'll set it to point two, I guess, first. And so we have pinch speed, and then basically this should be our pinch distance. So in this case, um, let's set the uh, camera fov with this. Uh, yeah. Oops. I have to type field of view, don't you? Set field of view, and we will get field of view. First, and then we'll add. Obviously, this is very. Uh, we're not using a clamp or anything, but actually, we'll just use a clamp. That just makes it easy. And we'll clamp it so that um. Because if we clamp it, then it means we can have a maximum min. We'll just set it to 120 max. Oh, that's min. Set it to 60 min and 120 max. Actually, in a proper game, you'd, you'd be more careful than this. And. Obviously, we can't actually test this with a uh, computer, unfortunately. Uh, so what we're going to do instead is uh, this: this this should work with this should work with a um, with fingers on a touchscreen. My computer is on a touchscreen. So instead, what we're going to do is I'm just going to use the point uh, zero zero zero, which I believe is the top left of the screen. So instead of uh, getting uh instead of using the uh touch two we're going to use uh touch one and we're going to uh do it from uh the from zero zero like i just said so uh this is what we're going to do here is um we'll just add zero because there's nothing to add divide by two uh we'll just leave like just so you can see how it works and um yeah, but so basically, I'm just gonna, I'm just, just, just look, remove this, and we're just gonna use our uh, left. We're gonna use the just the mouse um, button to test this, uh, and we'll just instead of using this branch, we'll just pull it right down, uh, right down to here, and hopefully this should work. As I said, I haven't actually tested this or anything like this before, so never know. Tab. Well, it worked for a second if you saw there, but interesting. So it is working. It just doesn't work. Uh, Consistently, uh, it doesn't work over time. So let me just look at this here. We've got tick. Turn it there. We're getting the distance between. 
finger one and prior lock which is set there and then setting finger one prior lock here to the right one I assume because yep times pinch speed hmm Interesting, I'm not sure what the problem is here. Also, we want to, um, I just remembered we actually want to, so you can pinch both ways because vector length just gets you the distance between uh, the two fingers. It's a, um, it's an absolute. We also want to use, we also want to be able to like zoom in and zoom out sort of thing. So, with the two fingers, uh, vector length will get you the uh, the length between the two fingers, um, or between the, the between the fingers and their starting locations. But we also want to see if their if the fingers are closer together than they were from their start location. So that's pretty simple. Then we just multiply it by one uh, if it is true or not. So pretty simple. Uh, we can just get their current locations. And if, uh, oops, uh, subtract finger two length. If it, if their current distance is more than their starting locations, uh, distance. So start lock, start lock, subtract. And then distance, not distance, we're going to do length. If it is more than that, uh, so if if we're uh, pinching our fingers out, then we want to zoom in. So then if we select this, use a select, I mean, select float, and uh, if it is, then we want it to be negative one, because it means that, yeah, like I said, we're pinching out. I mean, uh, yeah. And if it's uh, less than or equal to, then we want to be 1. Then we'll just multiply this by our by that again. Then we add that. And this shouldn't do anything, really, um, with that. Uh, it does because it's, because our, I believe it's set there. Yeah, so it's actually from the center of the screen, but zooming in and out, it's just not doing it smoothly, which is which is confusing me. Let's just look at why. I'm sure there's an obvious reason. I'm just missing it. Well, for instance, this is still going through there. Well, that shouldn't be firing. That still should be firing. Tap should still be fine. But this should be happening every tick. Okay, just trying to call my friend. Sorry if it's very loud.
Okay, here he is. Hello. <laughs> so anyone and everyone who is watching, not live, because there's no one watching right now, but if you're watching as a video, this is Terracotic of Terracotic on YouTube. Yes. Yes, I did. Yep, and I'm hearing double of you, by the way. <laughs> That's odd. Means everyone else is hearing double as well. Anyone who is watching after the fact, I mean. It w okay, it sounds fine now. I can't hear you now. I, I can't. I can hear you once now. Um. Yeah, what's this bitrate? What's the problem with the bitrate? Because the bitrate when we tested it, it was fine. Like, it's not that bad. You can still kind of see it, but... True. Hash. Yeah, the background could probably make it look a lot better. <laughs> um... But yeah, so I think you've been watching. I'm doing a pinch and put, and I'm stuck on a problem where uh, it's only happening every time you let go of the finger that's actually firing off the event, or it seems to be like that anyway, which is quite annoying. Are you not? Let me see something. Oh yeah, say something. That was amazing, but you're right, it's not. Development toolkit. Okay, there we go. Now people can hear you. Okay, sorry to people who have heard me talking to myself for the, last, the thing. <laughs> for the last couple of minutes. Um, but yes, this is, this is my friend Terracotic. He is on YouTube at youtube.com. And if you search for Terracotic, then he'll be there. Um, <gasps> it's me. Yes, and he's... Uh, He's made various comedic uh, videos of various sorts on varying types of content. Laugh-worthy content. Yes, pretty much. And some of them feature me in it as a as a background voice, but not many of them. Um, so yes, let me just look at this. I don't know why it's only firing. Let me just move that so it's in the lines. Event tick is firing off the set field of view. Which is calling this. Let's just do the print. Print's easier. Let's just use a print to test. Print. Print string this. Did that come through on chat? Yes, it did. Very much did. <laughs> okay. I apologize. <laughs> it is only calling uh, for some reason when when you let go interesting interesting hmm i'm not sure of problem because it's working in the same way that the previous one worked. Rest in peace. Yes, we're from Rick. We were uh, at school today. We were quoting Assassin's Creed, and I was like, "Rest quick, Kapaka Patch and Pache," and then ah, yes, of course. And yeah, classic Assassin's Creed uh, classic, words right there. Classic Ezio. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> hmm. Also, for those that care, yes, I did intentionally muck it up and then I got it right later so don't worry about it <laughs> you can use a switch this might work uh, not switch what is it then Oops. um where is it Niagara can't wait for that to come out, it's going to be good. What's that? The uh, new particle system, called Niagara. It's going to be very good. I thought you 
said Niagara. That's how it's spelled. <laughs> That's not how it's said. Yes, I know. I'm just reading it as it was spelled because I wasn't thinking about it. Hmm. Ow. I see. Yes. Yes, quite. Yeah, it's cool. uh, first of all, let's just put that, that there, there so it only happens when we actually have our finger down. Hmm. This behavior is very strange. Have I just plugged that back in there again? Not tab, so it actually works. It works smoothly. And yet, does not hear. It's very strange. Very strange. It is. Um, fine, let's use a gate just to see if it's some sort of weird uh, bug. Gates are fun. Oh, of course, I just wasn't alt-tabbing. Well, spent 10 minutes or something trying to figure out why this wasn't working. Just because I wasn't alt-tabbing. Well, there you go. Well, it works, people. So at least that's, at least that's a <laughs> positive of this ordeal. Uh, um, let's just set, plug this up the right way so uh, we can just look at it one last time how it's supposed to look. And we'll just go through it all again. Uh, in terms of the way it works. Uh, so let's put this back in there. Okay, so basically, we added a new input for finger 2, which was uh, touch 2. And then, when that's pressed, we set a new uh, boolean called finger 2 on uh, to on, and then uh, to true. Then we set uh, finger 2 start location, another variable we created, uh, to its current location, which we can get through touch 2 right here, as we did in the previous tutorial. Then we set spry lock as well, like in a previous tool up here. Then we set, uh, when it's released, we set it, uh, finger 2 on to false. And then we also added it up here, the same thing, but for finger 1. And we renamed these to finger 1. Then on tick, we check if finger 2 is on. If it is not on, but then finger 1, uh, th if it's not on, then it goes to this gate, and then obviously the gate will um, stop it or allow it, whether or not, depending on whether or not finger 1 is pressed. Um... If finger two is on, though, however, it goes down to a branch just to make to, to make sure finger one is on because this isn't using a gate like this one is. So we need to check finger one on because it's not after the gate. If finger one is on, then in this case we're using we're we're setting the field of view, and we'll go through this logic in a second. Then we're just setting the prior locks for each of them, um, like we have to up here as well. So in the actual maths part, we're getting each of their current uh, positions, and we're subtracting that position from their initial position. And then we're getting the length of that, which is the distance between their current, where their finger currently is and where it was originally. And then we're adding them together and dividing by two so that we can get the average amount that they have moved in that, in that particular frame. Oh, we're not subtracting from the initial amounts, we're subtracting from their prior location. So we can see how much they've actually moved. Then we're uh, multiplying that by our pinch speed, which is a variable we created. And by def we've set it at uh, by default to point 0.2, you can set to whatever you want, but point 0.2 works well, because point 0.1 works well for swapping. Anyway, don't worry about it. And then uh, we are multiplying that by negative 1 or 1 based on whether the pinches are like a pinch in or a pinch out, which we can determine by looking at our initial locations and our current finger locations and getting the distance between each of them and seeing if the current distance is... Uh, less than the initial distance so we can see if we've actually pinched it or not out and then we are setting our camera field of view uh to plus or minus that change and that is at long last after 10 minutes of trying to fix a bug which is an engine bug not one actual uh, logic that is the pinch input done uh finally and i'm just going to now uh disable it just because we don't want it uh enabled um because we're not going to be using it for any of the other tutorials we're going to be doing. I'll just set that too. Okay. So, there's one done. Um, can I have a drink of water first? Let me away from the mic so I can't hear it. 
Oh, it's not there. <laughs> you know how your computer is. Is well, actually, oh, no, you know, yeah. No, I've never actually heard it, but I I have been told of it. Um. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we're doing is very simple. We're just going to be doing the loading screen. Uh, we're going to be doing a very simple one, uh, which doesn't show you the amount that's loaded. It just has you know a little loading thing. Uh, so we're going to. I believe we do not have a menu map. Oh no, we do, do we? Don't we? I think I already created that in a previous tutorial. Yeah, I'll the menu. Okay, so we do have one. So then let's open the menu uh, UI widget. It's not hard. It's menu. So uh, we want to. If we press play, we want to then uh, create a new widget on top, or just make something visible. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a. Uh, we're going to add a border. Yeah, we'll add a border on top. Going to make it fill the screen and its anchors, and we're going to reset this to zero. But then these have to be set to zero manually because their defaults are not to zero. So there we go. We've got filling the screen. Going to set its Padding to zero. I leave this brush as default, and then we're going to add an you know, animation. So this is something we haven't done in the tutorial yet. We're adding an animation. I'm going to call it uh, load fade. And if we select this and we add, uh, let's call it let's call this border something. Border under. I just call load, so we know what it is. Then if we go load fade, we add border under load wherever it is. There it is. Then we can add a track, and we will add a uh, brush color, I believe. Yes, brush color. Alright, we're going to make it fade in, so it looks nice. So, we'll just make it quick, so we'll make it, uh, let's make it 0.4 seconds long. So we'll start at 0, which is not what it's set up by default. We cannot make it that. Oh, we don't need to change this, we don't need to change this, we can move this one. Change the opacity to 0. And then at point 0.4, we will set it opacity to 1. There we go, just got a nice fading in brush there. And we just need to make sure this doesn't play by default, which I do not think it does. Uh, used to be a setting here, I believe, to do that. Um, so we compile that first, so we just have it set up. And in the graph, we have our animation here. Uh, so what we're going to do is if we press play, we want to play this animation first. By the way, we're going to add the actual, uh, sp they call it a throbber in um, Unreal Engine, the little thing that spins around, <laughs> which is um, interesting. We'll play animation, on play, and Time it forwards, start at time zero to make it look nicer. Number looks to play, so just one. Then that should be good. Um, yeah, we probably won't do a streaming level just like that. Okay, we'll back, go back into designer. We'll add a throbber onto it, which is here somewhere. Actually, no, first we need to add a canvas panel so we can put everything where we want. And there we go, that's all done. Easy. And we'll get the throbber, which is here somewhere. If I can find it, here it is, circular throbber. So, yeah, there it is. And we'll make it uh, 128 by 128. Alright, it's a really hard color to see. So, I'm going to make it a white square, so let's just go white. Like white, and then we'll make the tint black. There you go, you can see it. And we'll the period is the distance, obviously radius. It is not letting me change that for some reason, and I'm not sure why. Okay, well then we'll have to leave it by default at what it is, and we'll just put this down. Actually, we'll put it right in the center. Just reset its anchors, and yeah, we'll leave that as default, obviously. And we'll set its alignment to 2.5.5. .5. So now we have our play, and then obviously we want to add this to the animation. So we'll add this to our clock. Throbber underscore load capital, and then we'll add that down here. 
to your thread underscore load. Add track. Uh, it does not let you change the image, unfortunately. Okay, we'll do something more interesting. We'll change the radius if we can. Yes, we can. Change the radius. We'll leave it. We'll have it one by default, and then we'll change it to. Uh, I mean, zero at default, and change it to sixteen at max. Actually, no. We'll change it to thirty-two or sixty-four. It doesn't be doing much, does it? No. Because it's not actually animating for some reason. Right, okay then. Um, transform then. We'll change the transform. We'll make it scale up. So from 0 to 1. There we go. Now it works somewhat. Uh, so if we just play this, we get this because it is uh, visible by default, it would seem. So, you know, it shouldn't be, okay, well, there was a way to fix this and I cannot remember it, so we'll just add a new animation for, uh, Default, we'll call it. So in default, we'll add border load. Set its brush color to zero, and then with the thread under load, do the same thing we did before with transform scale, and we'll just set it to zero. So now, if we compile and save, and then go into the graph, and then go. It's on create uh, event on construct. That's what's called. I forgot about that. Then we'll get it and play. And set to zero as I thought to loop indefinitely. Zero again. And so now, if we play this, yes, we get it, and mouse is not coming up. Let's go back into here. And still, let's just get player pawn. Uh, get player control, I mean. Show cursor. Set to true, and now try this. It's not clicking. Oh, of course. Silly me, did not set the border load to uh, hit test invisible, and same with the throbber, hit test invisible. Now press play. It freezes and then loads. Okay, looks like we're going to have to use uh, streaming level, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately, but just load stream level. Uh, call it, uh, what's the level called? I think it's L underscore game. L underscore oh that's in the default start of content uh, somewhere ah oh, it's right here starter map I believe it's called yes yeah, starter map so into the name here starter map is a capital yes load stream level and then on complete do that because we'll have to load should block on load. This should fix the problem, I believe. Instead, it did nothing. Interesting. Uh, 
stream and package name. Wait a second. Okay, so it should work, hopefully. What's your laughing at? Real dank meme. Ah. Not really. I don't guess what I be. Let's try this then. No, that did not work. Just wait a second, please, people. Anyone who is watching. Having some technical difficulties with the tests. There's five people watching. Really? Not according to uh, the live oh, dashboard. Oh yeah, there is someone. Oh, apparently the live dashboard doesn't work. That's useful. Zion Fox is watching. Yep. Hello, Zion. Oh, Fox. Who? Isn't Zion from, uh, The Matrix? Yes. Yes. Hello, Neo. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, exactly. Got it. Yep. Got it. This dashboard is quite useful, uh, quite useless apparently. Let me try reloading it. Okay, let's just do a hacky way. I wouldn't call it, okay, not a hacky way, but you let's... You have a question in stream chat. Have you thought of making something related to character customization? Ah, thank you. Um, yes, so character customization is something that's really cool, obviously. Um, however, it's very difficult. It... It's horrendously complicated. Yes. Um, simple things like, uh, like the programmatic stuff, like stats and stuff like that, that's all really easy because you're just changing variables. With actual visual cust character customization, uh, it involves uh, instancing meshes like armor and stuff like that. And it involves uh, the best way to do that, if you want to know, is you need to have uh, a skeleton for each piece of armor uh, that uses the same animation uh, blueprint as the skeleton, as as the skeletal mesh for the player. It's probably a better way to describe it. Everyone's played Skyrim. Yes. Uh, so yeah, the way it, the way it works is you have like levels of skeletal meshes with their armor pieces. So you have them playing the same animation, um, and it, when people change their armor, you just change the skeleton uh, or the the skeletal mesh, which is just the armor with the skeleton, uh, to whichever one is that particular piece of armor. The most complicated part though is faces and uh, body parts because that involves scaling of bones. Yeah, cool. In mesh manipulation. Yes, uh, which is very complex. Um, bone scaling isn't terribly difficult. Uh, I imagine it can lead to some funky. Uh, it can lead to some very bad animation problems, if especially if you mess with the uh, the Z uh, length of each bone. Z length being the actual uh, like the 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 lengths of bone connecting each bone is the Z length. So. 
you need to make sure that um, if you scale X and Y, it should be okay. Like, it, it might stuff up some things. This is what's really difficult, because you can't quite tell, especially with UE4. Uh, it's the, well, with any engine, really. Um, it doesn't quite... Bones aren't meant to be scaled, really. Um, the, mo the most complex but best-looking way is to actually use uh, blend poses, which is where you have blend shapes. I think that's what they call in UE4. Uh, where you blend between two different vertice placements um, on the mesh. Which is how they do it in um, most games these days. Skyrim still uses bones, and big games like that tend to use bones because it's it's less costly. But um, vertice man manipulation allows you to control, uh, like that's how facial animation is done. It um it allows you to have precise control. It makes it look better, but um, it also means you have to de deal with uh, you know thousands or not thousands, depending on how complex it is, but a bunch of blend shapes, which is kind of annoying. But you can still do it. Uh, I don't. I don't plan on ever. On, on ever. I don't plan on making a tutorial on any time soon because it's very, not niche, but it's a very specific tutorial to make. And my channel is currently, at least, focused mainly on general sorts of um, basics. Yeah, not necessarily basic, but just general sorts of things you can kind of apply to most things. Like for instance, the uh, the bidirectional door, which is the newest tutorial that I've made. That is that involves uh, using timelines, which we've covered before, but it uses a little bit more and covers a few other concepts as well. And in uh, the pinch thing we just did just then, that covers using uh, that covers using uh, vector lengths and various mathematical things like that, and um, some some more like logic in terms of thinking about it correctly, sort of thing. Uh, so at the moment, there's no plans for me to make anything like that. But yes, it's it's. Uh, It'd be cool to do, but it's kind of too complex to really cover. Uh, like it would take it would take multiple long tutorials to do a proper full uh, video on it, sort of thing. But anyway, back to this. I believe play animation its exit doesn't wait until the animation is done. So if we just do a delay of 0.4 seconds, and whoops, not 0.43, 0.4 seconds. But yeah, I hope that answers your um, question. <laughs> Thanks, Zion, for your compliment. Um, I hope the uh, the huge blunder that was uh, my failure before with the pinching input wasn't off-putting. Um, this should hopefully work. If it does, then rejoice. And it does. Okay, so now, now we've added this. This is kind of a hacky way. It's not hacky. Um, in a more complex game where the, where the loading was a lot longer, You'd want to use streaming levels, um, so that, uh, because streaming levels allows you to, like, see how much it streams, so you can both, you can, you can have, like, you can show how much it's loaded. Um, uh, it also allows you to, uh, load it in the background, which is a very smart way to do things, because obviously it means the player doesn't have to see anything. Um, and it means that, um, it doesn't because uh, UE4 freezes if you try to open a anytime you try to open a level. So this will freeze kind of. Uh, it doesn't freeze very long in here because it's a very simple level that we're opening, but it uh, can f freeze for longer. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna go to our tutorial series folder. Let's close this other content one, and we wanna open our HUD. And um, you wanna have you wanna do a more complex version of this if you were doing it properly because this will just fire every time you op a new player is created. But we want to uh, uh, add the same things we have on our menu, on our widget menu. So we'll go to the designer and we'll copy it into here. And I don't think we can copy animations, unfortunately, so we're going to have to add those. So let's just add animations and we'll call it uh, fade load as we did before, whatever, fade. And our default. And, um, yes, so, uh, we'll add our fade first, add border underscore load, track brush color, opacity at zero, uh, at one, I mean, we want to start at one, because we're doing the inverse of what we did before, go to point four and make the opacity zero, so we got our transition again, 
Same with the, well not the same, but very similar with the throbber. Uh, the scale. This YouTube live info is completely useless. It does not tell me anything about um, viewers. Okay. Put the X and Y values, so we got the same thing we had before. Okay, we got that now. And then by default, uh, actually we don't need a default in this case, I don't think. Actually no, we'll, we'll, we'll add a default, we'll add um, border load, brush color, opacity to zero by default, and throw a load scale to zero by default, so that um, in other situations it doesn't say at uh, size one. Then graph on begin play. I mean, every construct, of course. We will play fade. Mr. Terracotic, are you there? Nope. Ah, of course. Okay. Now, if we press play. Loads, it goes black for a second, and I can't tell if that came up or not. Let's try again. It did, but there's a black screen in the middle because of the way it loads, unfortunately. I saw it come up. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. It comes up, but it, uh... Goes black. Let me just do something quickly. Sorry for this great commentary, I know it's uh, very lively. Just testing. <laughs> Thanks, Sun Fox. It's a, it's a nice fade, but the problem is that um, it goes black temporarily once it's lo once it's loading the screen. Uh, once it's loading the next menu, uh, next level. Sorry. Um, and there's no way to keep. Uh, we can do absolute. This will just. Oh, actually, won't be too bad. I don't think, but. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you to Zombie Guy. If you are watching, I can't tell because <laughs> YouTube isn't telling me. Everywhere I can see it, YouTube is saying there is no one watching. So that's useless to me, unfortunately. But thank you for subscribing. That's very good. Um, so I want to leave Absolute on. <sighs> Problems. Of course, the alternative way is you can just fade to black, if you if you wanted it to be seamless in this current fashion. Just testing, just looking at different things. It seems like I cannot I cannot find any way to fix it though. So I'll be back. Sure. So alternatively, let's change the color. Let's invert the colors of each of these things. Let's change this to black. Obviously, the throbber will disappear for a second, but it will be all right in some ways. Uh, let me change it here as well. Ah, hi Zombies Guy, thanks for subscribing before. Um, you know, making it longer won't uh, affect it, because what's happening is that 
because we're using open level instead of uh, stream level, it um it 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 get it destroys the previous level instance before it creates a new one, which is what causes that temporary black screen because it's it's temporarily got nothing to display and then it shows up the new thing. Uh, so that is unfortunately not something that will help it. Um, uh, what are we doing? Right, the color. Uh, like I said, all of these problems can be fixed if you use a streaming level, and I will probably, I'll probably make a proper tutorial on how to make a loading screen, and I'll use, a, a, I'll, I'll do a whole thing about uh, how to stream levels, uh, but just for right now, we're just doing it quick and dirty, because, uh, did that actually fade in? I cannot tell. That's the wrong one. Uh, no, it just... Oh, this is set to one here, isn't it? Oops. No, just sometimes UE4 can be finicky. There we go. Compile that, and then same here. We must. I'm not going to change the uh, default animations because I'm just trying to do it quickly. There we go. That looks alright. Um, at least for a quick and dirty way to do it. Uh, but yeah, basically, I'll just do a streaming. I'll do a streaming tutorial, uh, a streaming level tutorial, which will also cover uh, for for loading levels, um, which will cover streaming levels. Basically, streaming levels is because you have um, you have the world outline, right? Because it used to be just called like level outline. It's world outline because you can have multiple. Uh, levels displayed at once, um, which can be turned off and on, basically. So it, it's like how you can create an open world game. Like if you want to create Skyrim in UE4, um, Skyrim is separated into chunks, and so when you're far away from a chunk, they use a really low quality version of it. There's like ten trees and stuff like that. <laughs> Thanks, Sion. For the, it's not perfect, but it's it's okay. Um, but uh, yeah, so Skyrim uses and games all all, all big games basically they are separated into like chunks of, of levels which um have like they have LODs LODs levels of uh, detail, um and so World Outline allows you to do that. If you look at the uh, the very taxing in terms of um computer hardware, uh, and incredibly large uh, demo file for uh, uh a Buenos kite the uh, demo released by uh, Epic Games. It uses a uh, world streaming system. This is that like, they they uh, it was one of the uh, innovations in the engine they did uh, that, that that they needed for um, a bonus cut because it's a huge world. Um, basically, you can have different levels in your world outliner and um, then switch between them, and uh, you can do it smoothly and everything like I outlined before. Uh, so I'll show that in a tutorial, I guess. Uh, uh, next thing, what was the next thing that we were going to do? Because I'm just going to leave that like that. It's okay. It's good enough. Just close all these tabs. Okay. Uh, hold to interact. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, innovate on our previous... I'm going to move this into a tutorial series. Just so it's easy. Uh, what we're going to do is we, so we already created a simple interact system. Which it sounds like Terracotta is back. No. Ah uh, yes, of course. Um, yeah, Zion has been talking more, and uh, Zombie Guy subscribed, and I don't remember if you were here for that, but he subscribed, and I was. Yep. Um, yeah, what I worked on the fade and basically made it black, <laughs> um, so that you can't see when it um, when it loads and freezes for a second. But yeah, I'm going to do a, a streaming tutorial later. Anyway, now we're going to, on to hold it to interact system. So in a previous tutorial, we already did a uh, simple interact system where you press E, I believe, to uh, interact. Uh, so now we're going to create a hold to interact. Just reading zombie guy's comment or thing. I don't know what to call it. Oh yeah, zombie guy. So um. Uh, if you go to my channel, uh, which you can see the URL for down there, I don't know if you can quite see my finger, but yeah, it's down there. It says uh, YouTube youtube.com slash skyblustudiosinc. Uh, there's a tutorial there on swiping, on a swipe, 
on a swipe input. And basically, uh, someone else asked me this question. You can adapt it slightly. All you have to do is a little bit of maths. So it, what, what, how it's set up in the tutorial, in the tutorial that I, I made, is it, it gives you the amount that your finger has moved in, the, in that frame. So you can like, for like just general swiping, like if you're controlling a camera sort of thing. You can change that to something for physics. Um, the uh, all you have to do is instead of instead of using instead of using the uh, tick system where it just checks every frame to see how far you move your finger, uh, you just when you uh, first put your finger down, you get the location to store it, which we've done in that tutorial. And then when you take your finger off, you look at how far you get their you get the finger location when they take their finger off, and find the distance between that and its original location. And then uh, you divide that by the time it took. So you can you also have to save the uh, world delta time, I believe it's called, or world running time. You have to look it up. Um, it's not delta time, because delta, or maybe it's world delta time. World time, something like that. You have to, so you, have to, you also have to save the uh, current world time when you put your finger down. Then you get the current world time uh, after, you pick, after you pick your finger off. And then, yeah, you divide uh, the distance your finger has moved by the time. And then that will give you a vector, um, or it, that you can use it to get a vector, or you can use it just to get the distance they've travelled. Um, you use you use the distance to figure out how fast they've they've flicked their finger, and you can use a, uh, and then you just use the vector two uh, D, which is the distance, uh, or the you use the their current finger location when they take their finger off minus their initial finger location uh, as vectors without using the length node to figure out which direction it's in um, and so you use the you use the direction to uh, to set the physics direction so like impulse in that direction and you use the uh, vector length times whatever like you know times 10 or times whatever um, multiplier that you want um, for the how fast they flicked it and then you can use that to send an impulse to the physics object which um, will flick it so I hope that answers your question please reply uh, tell me if it does after you see this because obviously it's 15 seconds delay or something like that um, anyway yeah so uh, what was I doing the hold and drag okay so we've already got a uh, right here somewhere oh right here this is the interact system it's using a left mouse button not um not E we have uh, this simple setup which uh, uses a line trace and then figures out if that uh, the thing it hits uses an interface. You can see this tutorial um, on the channel. I think it's called Interaction Interface, something like that. Tutorial. Um, and then we send interact thing. So all we want to do here is instead of uh, doing it as soon as we press the mouse button, we need to check, uh, you know, if like it's um, if the uh, if they've held their finger down for long enough. Uh, felt finger. Sorry, I'm thinking about swiping. Um, if they've held down the button for long enough, ah, you're welcome, zombie sky. <laughs> uh, if you have trouble with it, feel free to send me a um, like a comment on the video or something like that. I I think I, I let someone else asked me the same question or a very similar question, and I answered it better than I answered it just then on that, I believe. So you can also check my comment and/or reply to the comment or just the video, and I can help you. Like you can send me an image, or whatever. I'm, I'm happy to do that. Uh, yes, anyway, the halter thing, the halter thing. So, yeah, so what we want to do is, um, create a new variable called, uh, interaction hold, uh, percent. Uh, so, using a percent, but we're going to use it from 0 to 1 because, um, like, pro not probability, but just 0 to 1 is just easier. Uh, in terms of general maths um, and logic, uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we're also going to add another variable called interaction uh, duration. So this will be how long it will take you to interact with something. Let's just compile, and we'll set this to three seconds, I guess. Um, in se in seconds, obviously. Uh, if, obviously, you can use the tool tips to tell you to remind yourself what it's, what it is, but um, I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so duration in seconds and a whole percent. Uh, so it's pretty simple. What we're going to do is we will move this down here a little bit. 
and we will use a gate to that. Let me just remove, uh, get rid of this health stuff. We don't need that. It doesn't. It's it was just for one tutorial. Um, so left mouse button. We want to open a gate with this. Gates are very useful. Never under underestimate or never underuse gates. They're very very useful. And we'll open the gate with left mouse button, and we'll close it with a right mouse button, and we'll get tick. Has tick already used here? I think I used it up here. Yeah. So I am going to leave it there in case we need to use touch gestures again. But I'm just going to drag it down uh, into the gate here. Uh, so. If uh, left mouse button is pressed, then we open the gate, and if it's released, then we close the gate. And in exit, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, exit is obviously if it's open, uh, then it will go through exit. And we will just get interaction hold percent, and we will add, uh, we'll add, sorry, plus, and we'll get interaction duration. But obviously, because the duration is a time in seconds, we can't just plug this in. You could use speed. And you could call it interaction speed and plug that in instead. We're using duration just because it's kind of easier. And uh, for interaction duration, it's 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 still pretty easy though. You just use a float divided by float. Where is that? There it is. One divided by duration. And uh, then you multiply this by delta seconds. This is very important. Otherwise, uh, you'll add one second's worth every frame that you hold down left mouse button, which is not good. D well, delta seconds, as it says, it returns the frame time in delta seconds. So it returns the time that has passed um, between this frame and the last frame. Uh, and so we just uh, add that to there, and then we set hold interaction hold percent. Uh, not get, oops. Uh, set. And yep, and then what we want to do is we also want to fire, we want to create, so um, this this obviously happens, this pressed is when we will start doing the interaction, so we can, if you want to do something when they first uh, start interacting with something, like make something visible on the UI or something like that, you can do it there, uh, but we're not going to be doing that, so we're just going to leave it like that. Uh, so we have this, we have this exit, uh, updates every time we're, in, we're increasing interaction hold percent, obviously, because that's what we're doing in it. And then what we need now is we need to check, uh, if it becomes three. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to turn this, uh, tick into a sequence. So if I, this, so I just controlled click. Uh, control click by, by the way, um, if anyone's watching, to the people who are watching, which allows you to redirect uh, nodes, I guess. Um, so we first want to do this, we want to enter the gate, uh, and then we want to check if interaction percent is equal to 1. Uh, so we'll get interaction whole percent is equal to 1, and if it is, uh, oh, we also need to, uh, something before I forget, when we release, we need to close it and then we we need to set uh, interaction hold percent to zero first, otherwise it will never decrease. Uh, so interaction hold percent, I'll just move this up here and set to zero as it's by default. Um, so yeah, so that just, let's just fix that. But yeah, so if uh, it's equal to one, then we want to do whatever we're doing, which is just this. And then we will set interaction hold uh, percent to zero, and we will close the gate as well, uh, because this stops it from like. If we didn't set it to zero, then if we move the mouse onto anything else, or if we in fact just kept looking at the same thing, it will just keep calling interact on it, obviously, which is not what we want. And we close the gate as well as just setting interaction hold percent to zero, because it just means that the the player has to um, hold down the button again to interact with something else, which um, because. It just it just adds a little like a little bit more protection, I guess you can call it. Um, yeah. Anyway, Terracotic, uh, how can you tell me the statistics of the stream? Because YouTube is not telling me. Please. Uh, there are apparently on my end four people watching. Cool. Okay. Um, yes. So let's just test this out to make sure it works. So press play and. And oh, I disabled it. 
Whoa, what the hell happened there? Uh, let's go into player. I disabled uh, mouse input before because we were using the uh, swipe input. Okay, there we go. So now I can look around with the mouse. Good. So what did I have interact? Oh, the door. Is it working? Can't tell. Okay. Let me print out this uh, this value as well. That could be useful just for a debug. Obviously, in a real game, you'd have like a visual thing, most likely. Um, so let's just go print the current value of interaction hold percent. And for some reason, it is not being updated. Interesting. Very interesting and annoying. Let me see, maybe it's in the input somewhere. Oh, it's probably the, uh, because I used mouse for touch, that might be it. That is not it. That's annoying. That is set correctly. Uh, that is right. Game only. That's fine. Interesting. Let's try printing a debug string. Sorry to anyone who can uh, see the problem. I um, know how annoying it is if. Uh, well, it's being called fine. So that's not the problem. Open it. On tick, it goes the sequence. It goes through. It checks if it's. Oh. I said if interaction is not equal to uh, is not equal to one, then you set to zero. That's not what we want. I want it to be true, and then we want to set to zero. So let me just let me do this sequence, and then set it to zero. That was a stupid mistake. So now we can see it increases. Now if we look at this door and hold it down, it can it doesn't do anything. Oh, we need to clamp it to one. So if we go uh, clamp to zero and one, because otherwise it can go above one, which is obviously not what we want. There we go. Okay, so there you go. Now you can see it works. <laughs> A couple of problems and hiccups, but um, otherwise it works. This is obviously a very slow interaction, right? But um, it works. Uh, so that's that bit done. I'm just going to go again because I made a couple of mistakes there. And I'll also uh, spread it out a little bit better so that we can see it better. Delete those because those are not needed. I'll delete that as well because that's not needed either. Okay, let's move the gate up here. Let's set that down there. I'll put this up here. We'll put that over there. This stuff. Let's move it up, even though it's the second thing. We'll put it up here just so it's easy to see. And that we can delete. And okay, so basically, uh, our interaction button is left mouse button, which is what I've set it to. Uh, when we press it, we open this gate. <laughs> yeah, printing printing numbers is, is um. When you have loads of them, yes, it kind of looks like the matrix. Uh, yes, so when you press it, you open the gate, and this gate, uh, is also closed when you release it, but before, but before we close it, we set interaction hold percent to zero, because we need it to be zero if you let go, so we don't want to leave it at where it was, obviously. Um, but every tick, uh, this gate is entered, and then, uh, we increase, uh, the interaction hold percent by one over the duration, or the time it takes to interact because that gives us the amount of time that it needs to increase per second. Um, and uh, then after we go through this gate, we then check if uh, 
interaction hold percent is equal to one because one means it's it's at its fullness. So you're interacting. Uh, if it is, then we uh, we first uh, call our interact function, which is a line trace that we're doing, which then calls interact and stuff. Again, you can watch the previous tutorial on it. Uh, see it. Uh, and then we uh, go back down here and uh, set interaction hold percent to zero and close the gate to I mean so that we can uh, do it again basically um, but yeah there's uh, your interaction hold and obviously now we just uh, got rid of that uh, print string but you can see it still works and very nice reflections because of the planar reflections that were introduced in 4.12 very very nice Okay, that's another one done, I think, and I'm just going to have to check hackertype.net temporarily. Let's just move it onto the screen so you can see it. Yeah, shout out to hackertype. Yep, so it's just it's just doing random coding. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's so funny, it goes on, it goes on, it doesn't go on forever, but it goes on for quite a while, and if you just keep going with oh, it, I can on and the you, read, you read the comments, all the comments are just so... They're so intentionally random and BS. Right. Okay. It's, it's pretty pretty ent hold hold your space bar down. I am. <laughs> it just goes. Yep. Okay. That, that's <laughs> how hacking works. <laughs> just hold down space bar forever. Yeah. Um, blueprints. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs blueprints? We got hacker typer. When you have green text on hacker typer. Uh, okay. So. That is actually um, all of the planned things that I had. So, does any of the four people that I am known that I am in knowledge of being there, do any of you have anything you'd like to ask? Because I have, um, I have one more thing I can do, but it's not, it's not, it's a more uh, spe specific thing than the previous other things are. Um, But yes, does anyone have anything that they would like me to do, uh, in particular? Because make Skyrim. No, <laughs> I I will. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Does any of the four people currently watching have any um, suggestions for what they'd like me to see that doesn't take? Five hours, something that takes like half an hour or... Or five years, like making Skyrim. Yeah, or well, in fact... For, for five... Here and five years... Stream if you want to see him make Skyrim. <laughs> five, five years for a group of like 400 people. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 399. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Well, it's way easier. Um, Slow so down there. Get Todd, Todd Howard on it, he'll whip me up good. So I'd scroll a camera rig. You mean, um... Do you mean like a sort of simple one where it just flows the player and it has like a little bit of delay, or do you mean like an infinite runner one where it kind of moves along separate from the player, or what specific type of side? The thing with infinite runners is one. that typically the camera is stationary and the everything else around it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean like in terms of in terms of like people who are asking about it might not necessarily know that trick. Yeah. Um, side scroller camera rig railed. Railed. What do you mean by railed? Uh. Do you mean? Well, rail depends on it depends on. Uh... Are, you, are you talking? Are you talking uh, along the lines of, um, you know, from like what I remember, uh... playing the first Super Mario Bros. The camera only moves along one axis, and it doesn't follow Mario up if he jumps above. Right. So you want it to just go left or right? Yeah, that's what he said. Um, yeah. okay, because I had multiple different ideas for what you meant by that. Some of them were more complex, um, than others. One, like, one of the ideas yeah, I... Th I, th I think stuff like, uh, Rayman Legends, it follows you on the Y-axis as well. If, I yeah, guess. it follows you, yes, it does. It does, it, um, it has a, Rayman Legends is, because it's, it had a lot of effort put into the camera, in terms, well, not necessarily. It looks like it does, because it kind of does both. It, um, they've set it up so it can tell, it can tell. They tell it when, um, they want it to follow you up and down and when it doesn't. Mm. Uh, and so it's more intelligent, it's kind of like a combination of them. Uh, okay, so you just want... So, just left to right, so you mean like, um, not really need to follow the character, you mean like, uh... 
You mean like J uh, like Terra Codic said? Uh, you can say. <laughs> time crisis style. Uh, time crisis, huh? Time time crisis is uh almost just handled because uh, camera will move simultaneously. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So literally just camera scrolling with. The okay. Player. Let's let's do a, let's do. A, Let's kind of do, maybe let's do, let's start with that, and maybe if I can be bothered, I'll do, I'll do like a camera rig uh, on a spline sort of thing, which is a bit more comp, a fair, a, a lot more complex, but, um, is more like, uh, interesting to look at, um, although not necessarily. Are you talking like one that doesn't consistently move with the player unless they're moving towards the edge of the screen or the yeah, of like the um of kind of like the one like if you've ever played that uh, there's lots of games like it the only one i can think of is the one that epic made um uh yeah vaguely paragon no, paragon yeah, no. para anyway um where where yeah, like even even the first mario um th the camera wasn't always following Mario, it would literally only move yeah. to the right. It wouldn't move backwards, but yeah. it would only move to the right if uh, Mario was past a certain... Yeah, bound. threshold. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, like, the one, like, um, in whatever it is called, where it, uh, like, when you move around, it has a specific spline, like, for each level you can walk on. So, oh, okay. And so, like, um, it kind of, like, like, you know, you can make it so you zoom out at certain points to reveal more, like, you know, it's just, like, it's, it's more dynamic and, and yeah. pretty, but much yeah. more complex. Implementing that sort of dynamic movement's going to be pretty uh, specific to the needs of your game. Yeah, I think we're going to have to use a different uh, project than tutorial series, because this is obviously very much set up for 3D first person. Yeah. Let's, uh... Um, we should probably, uh, talk about, uh, Zombie Guy, Zombies Guy was saying about Time Crisis, Are you talking about time crisis uh like from what i know about the uh arcade games like you step on the pedal and then it it moves you out of cover or are you talking about the way that the camera moves around the level in between shootout segments because that stuff is all really event specific to the game whereas uh moving out of cover i imagine would just be um smoothing between two set positions yeah what he said uh if you'd like to answer that question, uh, then I can answer. Then I can try and do it if I, if it's um doesn't take too long. Don't look at my projects now. <laughs> Don't just kidding. Uh, okay, let's go. There's actually they have a default thing for this, so we can look at it and deconstruct it. Maybe make it a little bit nicer if we can. So uh, launch. Okay, new project. The great sperm race. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You had to. You had to point it out. Judy side scholar. Okay, so this is a default one that comes with it. It's not amazing at all, but we can just kind of look at it. So side scroller tutorial. So we'll just kind of deconstruct the camera and um, maybe see if we can improve it a little bit. Maybe make it a bit more dynamic and everything like that. Let's just play it. So you can see it's quite boring. I mean, the, the, the template itself isn't very high quality. But it's pretty boring, it, uh, it just completely and utterly follows the player, um, everywhere. With no delay or Yeah, it's, it's completely, uh, boring. The only smoothing happens because the player doesn't in instantly change directions. Um, so yeah, that's just, first thing you can do to make everything look instantly way more professional and nicer, is if we just open it up, and look at the camera, uh, camera boom. All we want to do is we just want to add camera lag. And we'll just leave yeah, they it. They have a default setting for that, don't they? They do, yeah. We just add that. Press play. All of a sudden, it's smooth. And so much prettier. And, and you can you make could, it laggier you if you make, want. Uh, you could probably implement um, custom camera lag as well, pretty pretty simply. Yep. Um, without using UE4's default. You, yes, you can. It's not that difficult. But there's, there's no point really to use it. Um, because, uh, like, not to not use the uh, default one. Um, but yeah, you can see it, it already just makes it look nicer. It would look a lot better if the uh, the player had a jumping sprite uh, animation, flip book. Yeah, I don't know why they... Uh, <laughs> they yeah. obviously took the time to frame-by-frame frame screenshot the yeah. 3D model's animation. I know, walking, it's, running, it's pretty funny. Just, just running. Like, no one's going to jump in this thing. Yeah. Be specifically designed to jump. 
Okay, yeah, so you can see... they should have done. They should, they should have just made the, the sprite and animated it like Mario, so that, like, the Unreal Engine blue guy just does that thing where he shoves his fist up into the air. Oh, yeah. And throws his legs out either way. Yeah, that'd be pretty funny. Yeah, he goes, like, backwards and forwards. Um, I'll, I'll talk about your comment in a second, zombie guy. Um, and apparently it's on. Uh, so I just look at the camera quickly. <clears throat> so obviously it's, it's horizontal to the player. It's a sprite. Obviously it would work 3D as well, but in this case it's a sprite. Uh, so the camera, oops, the camera is uh, perpendicular to the uh, forward direction of the player, as it would be for side scrolling because it's side. We have the, we, we enable the camera lag because it makes it lag. The speed, uh, it doesn't. I'm not quite sure exactly what the speed means. I think it is. Um, I think it might be in meters per second, um, but I'm not quite sure. You can also give it a max distance, so you know you can make it like uh, 100 units, which is one meter. Um, so it can only lag one meter if you want. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, if you wanted to make it a bit more dynamic, like um, time-based events, so you mean like. In, let me figure out what that thing is called right in a second. Impressive. Shadow Complex. Shadow Complex. That's what the right. game I was thinking is. Um, in this oh, game, this, do you mean like... That's pretty funny. It is. Do you mean like... Um, do you mean like in this game... I'm, I haven't played Time Crisis, so I'm not exactly sure what that is. But like where um, you come into an area and it kind of like zooms out and shows you the entire area with the player not moving. Is that what you mean? Zombies so, so in time talks? crisis, basically, when you are, uh, it's one of those arcade games where you shoot at the screen, and you put your foot on the pedal to go out of cover, and you release it to go in cover and reload and stuff. Right. But um, between uh, sort of rooms, when you're shooting guys, when you get rid of all of them, typically it's like go go go, and then it just takes over and moves your character, your first person character, down a hallway and into another room or whatever. Right. Is that um? Which, uh, isn't that first person? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you could, you could probably you could probably do that with blueprints if you want, but I imagine would that work with um with uh what's what's their what's their directing tool? Well, now it's um sequencer, sequencer, which is way yeah, better okay. than matinee. Make it sh I'll have to make a show on it actually. It's a good point myself. Yeah. Well, because yeah, the only thing that would be really specific to the game. Like Time Crisis, you know, all of the movement code can be transferred into something else. But uh, you know, the only thing unique to Time Crisis compared to doing a tutorial on it would be the, uh, you know, just the places to move to, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, doable. Zombies guy, with your comment with the time-based enemies, did you, events? Did you mean um? Did you mean like Time Crisis first person, or did you mean like uh, side-scrolling? Like I said, where you like it zooms out to show you one area if you're in that particular area, and then when you go into like a, a vent or something and you're really small, it zooms back in. Is that is that what you mean? The only thing I can remember relating to time, uh, time crisis. No, um, was basically you would be in a set room shooting people for like twenty seconds, and then after that twenty seconds was up, an explosion would play, and then you'd move. So it's just like a scripted move. Um, Unless he's talking about, I think in the first time crisis, which is the one that I played more than any of them, I think, um, in one of the really early levels. So you were sitting behind a crate that was on a conveyor belt that was moving diagonally up through the room. Right. So, you know, obviously there's a, only a certain amount of time that you would be on that conveyor belt. So yep. if that's what it means. Or... Okay, so first person. So you mean like kind of like an on rails shooter, do you mean? Yeah, it's, it's an on rails shooter. Okay. Um, yes, you would use, I would use Splat, you could use Sequencer now, because sequ uh, you could use Matinee before, but Matinee was a lot more complicated because you're going to do it in certain levels and stuff like that. You could use Splines, Splines are a good choice, um, but, uh, well, they're a good choice, but they don't, they're harder to work with because you have to program in everything. You can use Sequencer now, because Sequencer, unlike Matinee, isn't for a particular level, you can actually... Uh, you can actually like play sequences and at any level you want as long as you have like you apply it to whatever you want. It's probably just easier upright. 
Uh, it's easier straight up to just do it with sequencer. Yeah, it, it, it is because you can also really you can also do cinematic things as well with it. More. Uh, yeah, you can also do cinematic things. So if you have, if you want to like play explosion, then you just play the explosion. Uh, <laughs> you can't see my hands. I'm very emphatic right now. My hands. Yeah, you can see part of my hand. <laughs> but uh, okay, so oh, get a load of that sprite. <laughs> <laughs> it's so high quality. Okay. <laughs> If we're doing on Rails, then let's use the third-person template that I have already created and didn't do anything with. Also, I love it because the side scroller thing is so old, and like no, no one's probably ever used it really. Like um, that they're still using the blue guy. It's not even the new guy. Mm. <laughs> the new guy's way cooler. I remember when the new guy was only in like one project. And I was like, ah, oh, Wonder and everything else. Wasn't it just his arms in the first person? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. And you were like. Something, something's different. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was fun times. He's so much cooler than he's uh, than the other one. Obviously, this this is like a year and a half old or something. Like, it's not at all new, but it's still cool. It's still cool. Check yeah. out that content browser that doesn't have the uh, folder view. That's right here, bro. Right here. Whoa, whoa. Oh my god. Oh, Mag, you can actually see. Oh it. You can't god. see it live. I don't remember that. Bit. I know, but I'm reacting to it. So that, <laughs> you know. It's timely. <laughs> yeah. oh, I have a weird laugh, by the way, people watching. I have a, a weird but amazing laugh. Yeah. Oh, well, now I'm seeing it. <laughs> it's wicked. Um, but yeah, okay, so we're going to do this. So, let's try sequencer. I haven't actually used sequencer yet. I, mean, I know how to use it. Um, I haven't done anything actual with it, though. So, let's create a new sequence, then. Let's go... Uh, YouTube folder... Sequences, and then it is here somewhere, I believe. I do believe that, my friend. Um. So Zion Fox is talking about uh, basically playing mini, uh, you know, in in between rooms, playing sort of a, a cutscene of sorts, where basically you kill a guy, and then the camera zooms in. He says here on a gigantic door, and a door opens, and a dude steps out and is like hey look at me look how cool i am and then it moves to the next zone so uh i imagine you can, you can make sequence so yeah so you would probably just separate those into different sequences uh so you mean timelines. okay so it means um not necessarily on rails but like uh like a first person cutscene kind of Kind of just like pre, -de yeah. It's ba it, it's basically just you know cinematic camera movement. Okay. You know, uncontrollable. Then, yeah. Okay. Then let's create this. Do you want to create the uh, sequence? We'll add a camera cut. No cut. Yeah. Add to sequence. Huh? Add to sequence. Where is it? I haven't used it since it was in um, testing phase. Right there. Of course it's right there. They put it in the easiest place to see. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? That's why is it so fuzzy. <laughs> why the hell is it so Oh it's the depth of field, of course. Is it? Or is it just with logistics? I'm not sure. Anyway. Um let's like start it here. That seems good. Um It's an interesting field of view. Yeah, I know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it's I don't know why it's I think it's just, um, is it 4x3 or is it 16? Is it, actually, no, is it? Uh, maybe it is 16 by 10 Because that, that, that window is wider than it, than 16 by 9 I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. It's not. Um, let's make this a bit bigger. Fun interjected random fact. I watched Star Trek and it's pretty good. The new Star Trek? Yeah, Star Trek Beyond. Ah, uh, okay. It's pretty good. Not your jabrams, but pretty good still. <laughs> cool. Okay, 600 Which frames. reminds me, after after this, I'm going to go watch Star Wars. Okay, of course. I haven't watched it in a while. That's unthinkable for you. Big um, Man McQuack is playing Risk of Rain, oh boy. <laughs> Big Man McQuack. Okay, let's add the current position of the... Camera. It's Come not on. there because I it already set reset again. Let's start it like right here. I like let's do something like this. Yeah, 
so we've got that. Then maybe let's, uh, we'll start with the focal length. Uh, that's the wrong thing, I mean. Manual focus distance. Ah, oh, so pretty. So pretty. That was wrong. 60, 70, oops. No, 55. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so we start that there. Start that there. Yes! Very, very shiny balls, in fact. And we'll go to like uh, 200 frames. I like my audience. <laughs> we'll go not super far, we'll go to like. Out of curiosity, how long have you guys been subscribed to. Well, Zombies Guy subscribed at 40 minutes in, I think. Oh, cool. Yeah, so. At least one subscriber of this 500 some 500 subscribers i forgot to say that start the video 500 subscribers Whoa. so cool so happy it's like it's so like um it's great especially considering i got to 499 and then youtube did its sweep and, <laughs> and i lost 30 subscribers yeah. um it's like double it's because yeah that's so cool like, thank you very much to everyone who has subscribed um it's great and i have been forgetting to update the thing um, actually, you, you have 502 subscribers, so... Oh, bro. Oh, yes. <laughs> currently... <laughs> so many, such, such a difference. Um, currently showing... Uh, it's really inconsiderate of those other two subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> it's also bad. Um, so here we go, if we press play, where it plays, there's no play button. There it is. So you do a nice, uh, if you can't because I'm just moving it, go back here, make it a bit smaller. So we do a nice little fade there. That's pretty nice, okay. And then let's maybe move the camera a little bit and we'll move it up to 300. We'll go from here. That's cool, Zion. Thank you very much for subscribing around two months ago. And then we'll go up here. Like this. And we'll also increase the aperture so we can see a bit more as well. I mean, the uh, focal length, whatever. Uh, to the transform here. So now if we do this, we go... I'll add a thing for focal length. So we'll go up here and then we'll make the focal length bit wider and then the splines the splines my friend animation keys is what they call them in UE4 we need to change this so splines in case you don't know uh, splines the uh okay the splines in in this uh it allows you to change the uh gradient of the well, the overall function of the changes so you can see if i click on this you can see this is the it by default it follows a bezier curve i believe is what it's called so it kind of eases in and eases, eases out uh for, for everything by default i believe is the default yeah you can see there as well so what uh what we're going to do is it's, it's already nice because it's easing but what we're going to do is we're going to kind of start really slow and then speed up and then slow down really quickly at the end for the uh what i want to do not what you want to do uh for the transform so you can see all the positions are shown separately. I believe there's a way to show them all uh, together. But I do not remember exactly where that is. <coughs> Sorry for my voice. I don't remember exactly where that is. That's not it. Uh... Okay, I'll just leave that. Um, rotation, yeah, we'll leave it there. And we'll, yeah, so what we want to do is we want to change the tangents of these. You can see these are the tangent controls. So this allows us to change the tangent, which is the like the gradient at that particular point in time. And um, so if you can see if we drag this, it does not let us drag it out for some reason. That is odd. That is very strange. Okay, 
Okay, we're going to have to create a new point then. Let's shift click. There we go. Okay, shift click. I'm going to pull this over here. I'm going to smooth it out a little bit. So basically, what I'm doing is I uh, want to change this to uh, transform. Is I'm making it so it starts off really slow, so uh, with its movement, and then it speeds up. So if we do this for all the curves, I put it here and do the same sort of thing, and then this big one do the same sort of thing. Put it down here. So you'll see now if we press play on this, kind of does it slower and then gets a bit faster and then oh faster all of a sudden. See that? And also you can make it, I think we might want to make all of them a bit uh, faster. So if we just select these, bring them over here, like this over here, and select these and bring them over here. Kind of press play. Whoops. Not what I meant to do. And press play now. Still very fast, but not quite as bad. Um, but yeah, basically this is how you can kind of motion. But if you want it to go into the player, then uh, obviously we're not actually playing it yet. We're just um, editing it, so it can actually play in game right now. Um, but then we can do this, and then maybe we'll just rotate around again, just a bit quicker because um, <clears throat> this is just for testing after all. Come down here. Like that game mode at a point there and maybe not what that was and then we'll change the focus distance to a bit lower and you can see it does that it, it, it spins the wrong way not the way that I want it to do so we can change that in the curve because you don't really want to say it's in that way, but anyway, we'll just continue on, and then we'll go to like, we'll go, let's make it 450 frames long instead of 600. We'll go to 450, and then we'll go back over to the player. And we'll set the uh, the player, the uh, camera point more accurately so it can kind of smoothly transition into the player movement, or uh, the player camera. So if we go, let's say, uh, where's the player at? The player itself is at x negative 750, which is not what we need. We need the y, which is 390. Uh, and the uh, Z is at 226, let's make it uh, 350, and the X being at, that's too far, try that, seven, negative 750. Then that will have animated the movement, but hasn't animated the rotation yet. Let's rotate around to look at the rotation. Get to zero and zero. Perfect. And then we'll move the player back a little bit more, the camera back a little bit more as well. To negative one, one, one. One, one. Oh, let's try. Cool. So I'm going to change the animation there. So let's go into the splines. Sorry if this is a bit boring. It's very, uh, like not something I can um, really change. So you can see this is the curve right here that's doing that annoying thing right there where it spins around the wrong way. Uh, not that curve, I mean. Uh, this right here, it's going in the wrong direction. That is why it's spinning around to the opposite uh, rotation way. But if we change it down here, uh, oops, wrong thing. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, 
you can see it's it's going back through zero which is not what we want obviously um, the way we can do that is to we have to kind of go back around rotation which is kind of annoying because uh, that's the way that UE4 by default uh, interpolates its rotation um, use right mouse button to scroll along so instead of putting this at uh, what is that Z instead of putting it at negative 131 we will put it at 360 minus 131 which is 230 and that did the wrong thing um, <laughs> sorry at this point here let me do that at, there uh, put it to was at 71 so let's put it at uh, 290 negative 290 now if we play through this it should be better and it's not playing at all why aren't you playing uh, it has just stopped working for some reason. Let's try opening it again. Right. Okay. Let's try opening and closing it again. So for this, if all problems, I'm sure you're used to them if you've ever <laughs> used. And it's disappeared. Oh, there we go. Okay, good. And this camera, I need to. Uh, yeah, see, the film back setting it's set to 16 by 9 DSLR, that's why it, So it is 16 by 9. Uh, I need to is it attach the camera to here or something. Uh, no, how do I do it? I can't remember. It's been ages since I had to do this. Oh, they changed the camera thing. Snap view to object. Nope, that is not it. Why is there a setting specific to DSLRs? <laughs> Uh, they're using it um, with sequence. So one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to make it like using actual cameras. Um, so you can see all the settings there. If you can see it, you can't see it because you had delay. Um, they have different types of cameras you can use because they want it to be exactly like actually making a film, which is why they have focal length and stuff like that instead of zoom or something like that. And they have all these ridiculous amounts of proper camera manual settings in them instead of other things uh they have a setting specific to canon's APS-C sensors yep their crop sensors what would that change i don't know <laughs> um probably change like anyway, the, the size of going, the sorry. thing it's fine um i'm just trying to remember how to do this because Uh, because it's annoying that it doesn't do it. Uh, just look it up for a second. This has been a problem with uh, it for a while. Okay, that is not helping me at all. Sorry, folks. There it is, of course. It's the button right there. Okay, so let's look at this rotation now. See if I fixed it with that. And I did. I don't know if you saw it there. But... It, uh, let's see. Let's have, uh, let's see, it rotates the right way around. Obviously, we didn't do an actual smooth rotative, uh, 
like a, we did like, a, we did a linear movement from one position to the other. We didn't actually rotate around a specific object, so it doesn't look amazing. But the camera rotates the right way. Here it doesn't though. You can see it spins around. Now we've got a problem there. So now if we look at the splines for rotation and Z specifically, we can try and figure it out by. It obviously shouldn't be doing that, should it? That just makes it worse. Oops, sorry. Very odd. It might be if we set the Z rotation at 450 to negative point one. It still does it, which is very odd. Ah, uh, it's doing it here, apparently, I guess. I didn't think so, but that is what it kind of looked like. No. Hmm. It shouldn't be doing this, because if you look at the spline here, you can see that it's, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, Zion Fox. I don't know when you asked it. I haven't looked at it for a second. Um. But yeah, I've, I would love to stream to Switch as well, but um, if you look at it, I mean, you can tell by the quality of the stream, I, I can barely support just streaming to YouTube at 700 megabits a second or whatever it is. Um, because I have Australian internet, and although my download is perfectly fine, my upload is absolutely atrocious, uh, so I can't upload to two uh, at once, unfortunately, but I would love to. Um, but I can't. Yeah, Australian internet's kind of, uh, yeah, <laughs> terrible, <laughs> yeah, mostly. What's your upload again? Because you have pretty good upload because you have the FTTN. Uh, FTTB. FTP. FTTT. Um, my upload is, uh, 40, supposedly. Yeah, I've got, I've got 1.3 on a good day. 1.3 megabits per second on a good day, Zion. That's why I can't. Uh, and it, it gets worse at night, and right now it's nine o'clock in Australia, in where I live right now. So, um, in Melbourne, in Australia. So, it's uh, it's not amazing, unfortunately. I would love to stream to both though. Why is this happening? Let's let's um hook the camera. Um, Twitch does have an Australian server at this moment yeah, in time. Yeah, but YouTube does as well, and I'm using. Do they? Yeah, I'm using it. Right, of course they do. Oh, it's I haven't Google. messed with it. They so. have ones everywhere. They they have way more than Twitch does. Um, but yeah, even, even if it, even if like yeah, I just I can't. I'd love to, but I can't. Um, now why why is the rotation going the wrong way around? I mean, if you want that, then it, I mean it does what you want. <laughs> but um, not really what I want. It's oh, of course, it's, I'm silly me. Um, it's because it's going back to zero, and we need it to go back to negative three sixty because uh, because if it goes back to zero, then it has to go back through all those rotations. Silly me. Put this down here. Yeah, Zion streaming with that would be uh, he, he's saying he has less than a megabyte, a megabit of upload. So yeah, streaming with that would be yeah. practically impossible. Uh, at any decent setting, let, let, you, let's see what I have right now. You, your your upload um, is around three megabit, isn't it? No, one, mine's last time I tested was one point four. I'm testing right now. I'm about to test. Well, it. even one point four is even above one is pretty good for uh, Australian ADSL. Yeah, no, for ADSL. Like mine, for mine, ADSL mine before FTTP was like point seven. Yeah, for ADSL, it's fine. Um, not fine. It's 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 decent, but um. It is not amazing. Yes, yeah, so like for instance, my download is like twenty six megabits per second. I'm using speed test right now, by the way, people. Mm. Um, but my upload, when it gets to it, your upload will be uh, 
unrealistic because you're streaming. Uh, it shouldn't affect that. That shouldn't affect it. If it does, then I'll, I'll eat my words. No, it's not affecting it like I, like I thought. Uh, one, I'm getting one megabit per second upload. I've seen you get three before. Like I said, I, I thought was amazing. That was <laughs> that was that, uh, on good days. I can get really high um, when no one else on in Australia in Melbourne is using it. But um, yeah, one point two four is the max. To say never. <laughs> yeah, one point two four is the max that I just reached. Um, uh, megabits upload and uh, obviously videos are in uh, megabits per second, and or is it megabytes? No, it's megabits. Yeah, uh, and I'm well, it is uploading. Uploading videos is megabits per second, and this is 700 megabits per second, and you're seeing 720p with loads of rendering issues. <laughs> yeah, the, the the main the main culprit for a blurry image is the fact that he's got millions and millions and millions of tiny, small, itty bitty letters on his screen, and he's also got a live 3D view, and he's also got a live camera, exactly. and his uh, streaming software is just trying to make sense of all of those things happening at once, and when you don't have enough uh to upload to dedicate to it you have to down you have to turn down the quality and it just sort of muddles it up yep onto a nice blob of uh Goop. pixelated mess <laughs> so yeah so now you can see i fixed it because yeah this is a problem you run into all the time if you ever try to animate uh cameras uh because it's a very annoying problem of using uh the way that rotation is calculated uh, using uh, whether it's quaternions or uh, the other one that I'm completely forgetting. Oh, we are we have two new viewers. Oh, hello, people. Please feel free to say hello in the chat. And yeah, um, uh, what we're what we're uh, looking at right now is uh, zombies guy and Zion Fox in the chat. We're asking you about time crisis style camera movements. Yes. For, uh, scripted events uh and so yeah that's what we're kind of going through and we're also kind of doing a very makeshift haphazard uh run through of a sequencer and some basic animation techniques as well um because yeah like it, like, I just, like i just showed you need to uh when you use cameras because of the way quaternions and the other rotation method that i'm forgetting the name of um uh work is they have to interpolate between them I'm going to dig into my uh, Atiski memory and say Euler angles. Euler, that's the word, yep. Oh um, uh, boy, Atiski. Yeah. He made a video. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it. Literally the day after we were saying, man, he hasn't uploaded in ages. That's he made a video. Um, but yeah, so Euler angles and Quaternions is they have to interpolate it between them. And because of the way it uses uh, the floats work, is um, obviously like it's something you can't particularly uh, like. Uh, stop or fix but um we're rotating to negatives because um it doesn't matter which way but we're rotating, rotating to negatives for this animation um also you can see one nice thing about seeing curves you can also see how to make them smoother so the animation looks a bit nicer so you can do that in here as well see that's a lot smoother now um but uh it has to interpolate between it. so when we had it back at zero because i had set zero here is it had to go through back through all of the negative numbers from like 270 or whatever we are at right here um, to get back to zero. Uh, so it ended up having to do a full 360 uh, rotation. Uh, so instead of that, we had uh, what I've done is we I have set it to negative uh, 360, which will is the same as zero, obviously, because um, 360 degrees is one rotation. Um, and so it now interpolates smoothly down there. And then if you wanted to have a fresh rotation. Uh, placed and on the next frame you can set it to zero and you wouldn't be able to see the difference um, But you'd be able to start from zero again uh, But yes, that is the animation uh, Done basically uh, Now we want to pl uh, open the player Because we need to make this is the tricky thing so you uh <laughs> Um, uh, you'll see in like, uh, AAA games and stuff like that, um, when, ca when camera animations happen, they'll, um, like, they didn't used to happen like this, but, like, you know, the camera will end up going back to, like, if it's third person, to, like, the player, so you can see the player, like, and so that you can't see when it transitions from being the animation to the playing. 
which you can do if you have control of the camera. Um, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> negative three sixty. Yes. Um, <laughs> so what we're gonna do is, uh, what well, if you recall, if we open we open the sequence again. One great thing about sequence instead of matinee is you don't have to save it and close it every uh, close it every time you want to save it stuff like that. It's just <laughs> doesn't have the stupid stuff from UE three, uh, which is why I hated UE three in terms of usability. Um, you know it's a great engine. UDK. <laughs> you can see in our final position, we are at. Uh, don't forget, th these are just float mounting errors. These um cannot be avoided and don't actually affect it anyway. They're too small to affect it. Uh, we are at negative eleven hundred, three ninety, and three fifty. So three ninety is the Y coordinate of the player. So we want to have the camera directly behind them by default. So if we go into here, the camera is uh completely uh fine in terms of that. The Y value is zero, and there's no offsets here. Uh, so that part's fine. The X value is negative 1100, and the player itself is at negative 750. So we need the camera to be 1100 minus 750, which is, uh, 350. Uh, we need it to be 350 units behind it. So at the moment, it is 300, I believe? 300? Yeah, 300. So it's at 350. That's the right distance. And we need the uh, Z value to be correct. So this, uh, player center, don't forget it's the center, because the center is, is where the center of the blueprint is, is 226.284. We have the camera final location at 350. So we need uh, 350, uh, uh, yeah, 350 minus 226.284 uh, to be the location of this camera. And because, unlike many other programs, U U Unity, UE4 allows you to put maths into, uh, like, stuff like this, we can actually do that really easily. So we just need to get um, this camera. And uh, we can put this at 350, and then we can subtract that, and you can see the camera's not up there. Uh, so if we press compile and save, and we, uh, if we open the level blueprint up here, then I believe we can just go play sequence, play sequence. Yes, that is it. And we'll create it on begin play. We'll just set tutorial rig and I'll leave that at default. Then play, I believe, in the thing we use. Let's try that. There we go. So we got our animation. And it it's a bit strange and it didn't end. But now we have control of the player and we can play it. And um yeah, let's try and figure out what that, what that weird thing was there. Let's uh, compile and save that, and play it again. So, play this animation, and it spazzes out and goes over there, and it stops. <laughs> uh, and the camera, interestingly, seems to keep the same settings from the sequencer. Which is quite interesting. Um, so, so you probably just create a default state and then return to that at the end of the sequencer. Yes, that, that's how you would change that. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out why it doesn't play the animation properly. Um, let's see what these settings are. Play rate. Oh, that's one. <laughs> Thanks. I'm glad I could help you, Zombies Guy. Let's, let's try and fix this first. Because that is a weird issue that I, I'm not quite sure of the cause. It goes over there and fine, it just stops there. Why? Why is it so? Question to ask. It looks fine here. Make it a bit bigger. Uh, pull this out all the way. Bring this down here. Let's try setting this to 450 max again and 450. a way to do this but I am having a mind blank as to how to do it right now ah this is the problem there we go that is problem little stuff like that you forget 
the camera was not told to be the camera for long enough. So now, you can see it plays the whole animation, and it goes up here, and the camera spazzes out for some reason. It, goes, well, it doesn't spaz out; it um, doesn't go to the right position. So we'll talk about that in a second. But you can see that played it. So that was just a simple problem. Because uh, it's a camera cut, so you can see that. So by default, it just went up to here because that was like the first. Um, that was the first uh, keyframe we had given it. Hi, Tom Deadly Cakes. I like your icon. It's very uh, nuanced <laughs> in its uh, in its uh, glory, and you came at a very uh, memeish time as well. So that's a uh, memeish. Um, by the time you hear that, you probably, probably actually won't be. But yes, memeish. Very memes. Much memes. Uh, anyway. Let's try and set this. There we go. Lameo. Lem yeah. uh, let's check these points here because. Uh, yeah. yeah, sequencer is so much better than matinee. I'm just so glad. I'm definitely going to make a tutorial in case anyone's wondering because. Um, it uh it definitely deserves it and um is very good so yeah uh if you you'll see a proper written tutorial sort of thing um soon zombie dude got the last second half of your name zombies guy that's it zombie dude I wasn't that bad I wasn't that I wasn't that far off it's zombies dude zombie dude why are you not letting me set four fifty why you do this why you do this Spooky. <laughs> yes, that's in, actually in the description, by the way, of the um, stream. It says, my companion is terracotic. My companion. Oh, I'm your companion now? Compañero. Sheesh. Compañero. Of course, you can do it. Bro, there isn't even a sub for sub link, bro. Oh, hey, we have another We have another viewer. Ooh, Mazmaz. Mazmaz. Hello. Fantastic name. It is. I very much like your name. It's very, um... Uh, what's the word? I am forgetting the word. What's that? It's very much like what? It's a word. It's like, it's like re repetitive, but in a good way. And it's completely... Uh, it's, you're thinking, are you thinking alliteration or repetition? No, not alliteration, because I know alliteration. 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 Am I doing that? <laughs> I do not see it. I was about to call the Ghostbusters. <laughs> Uh, when there's something strange in your neighborhood, who are you gonna call? Feminist bloggers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Righto. That's completely irrelevant, but yes, I know. <laughs> yeah. I watched a video today that was a legitimate review, and the guy was like, oh yeah, by the way, side note, I'm gonna get so much hate for saying that I didn't like this movie, even though I said I didn't like it because it wasn't a good movie. People yep. are going to call me out for hating feminists. Oh uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, Maz. Thanks for um, joining us. Thank you for thanking and for being here today on this momentous Welcome day. Welcome to the Ghostbusters stream where we talk about Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> the, Ghost, the Ghostbusters <laughs> enthusiast stream. It's um. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters Apple Studios. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Eh? Um, right, eh, right, eh? right, 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 right. So let's see. You can see that the camera. Uh, and it just set it to 435 for some reason. You can see that the camera almost lines up perfectly. Not quite, though, for some reason. So let's see why that is. Let me change the speed. This is annoying. So it's slightly too low for some reason. So, okay, let a look at that, right? Right there. Right there. You're triggering me. I need you to stop. Get triggered. Your accents. Get triggered. <gasps> yep. Um. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay. Well, I go wreck myself bef after I check myself. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. This stream is turning into memes. I'm sorry, I'll stop. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'll be back. Yep. I'll be back. Okay, so let's try and do this again and see why it not work the way that we want it to work. It. And now it's higher. Interesting. Interesting the way that doing the same maths twice can change the direct the uh, location of something. Um, 
Oh, I set the camera to that. Idiot, 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 idiot. Of course, that was dumb of me. There we go. That is perfection. Now let's see how well it works and so it doesn't jump again. Oh, I know, it's because I had mouse input en enabled, so I'd actually moved the mouse, which would move the camera. I believe that is what the problem is. <clears throat> if I press play, I just try not to move my, cam my mouse. Obviously, I'll go over how to disable mouse input. I just want to see if that's a problem. That is a problem. Okay. So, what I want to do is on level blueprint, uh, uh, which is this one, we want to get player, player, pawn, and we want to set input, no, that's not it, uh, what am I doing, controller, make pawn, get input is what I want to type input 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 disable input I'll get player controller and then uh, as an event as an event I can't remember uh, sequence I believe there is a way to uh, duration is it? No. Uh, let me just find it. Wait a second. That's not it, obviously. Uh, okay, well we know we know the duration, so what is the duration of the actual animation? It's 450 uh, frames. Controller. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, play controller. Um, so we know the duration, it's 450 frames, and it's 60 frames per second. Uh, so if you do a little bit of maths, which I will use a calculator, because I'm too tired to do maths. Uh, 450 divided by 60 is 7.5 seconds. So, I uh, will do a delay of 7.5 seconds. Of 7.5 seconds. You can probably actually just get the sequence, and then you get the duration or something like that, but I'm just doing really simple today. Tonight, today, it's a combination of today and tonight. Uh, not that terrible Australian show today tonight. Uh, yes. Anyway, uh, duration, and then we will set uh, enable input. Enable input. A. If you speak uh, fake language, like I do, this should make it perfect. So I'm moving my mouse crazily, as I'm sure you can hear. And <laughs> political. And you can see it worked. The field of view seems to have changed, eh? But the camera position itself did not change, as far as I can tell. Yeah, no, the field of view just changed. So, we can now try and sync up the field of view as well. The annoying thing is, though, that uh, Sequencer uses the physical things, as discussed before. The physical values, whereas uh, the cameras in player, unless they've changed it, do not. Let us have a look, eh? No, they use field of view. Um, yes, that's annoying. Let us see if there's something we can do. Oh no, the black bars are caused by, uh, if we open the sequence again. The black bars are caused by, if I select the camera, you can see it has settings up here. The film back settings is, uh, 16 by 9 DSLR. Uh, so it's, it's creating the black bars to make it 16 by 9 because this play space here, uh, play space, the viewport isn't 16 by 9, it's like, it's probably like 20 by 9 or something like that. So it's creating the black bars just to, uh, make it 69 you can make it custom make it whatever you want uh it's just like that because um that's the default for this for the camera um and you can have active track as well so you can uh there's loads of things it's, it's amazing the, the, the amount of customization in this is amazing but um i am 
Yeah, I'm glad you. Uh, yeah, I'm cool. I can explain it. Um, I'm just trying to find the settings for the. I'm trying to figure out how to make the fobs equal because one is in um. Uh, focal length, and one is in. Field of view in degrees. Uh, let me see. There's probably a converter online. Okay, I found a calculator online. I'll just drag it onto the screen. I'm using Edge, by the way, because Edge is what I use um, for Scully Studio stuff. I'm not an idiot. I use Chrome myself. <laughs> um, yeah, it just means I don't have to log out and in. Wow, this is complicated. Wow. Do the other end. I want to do the degrees to degrees to um, uh, well, I want the opposite of that. That's not that's useless to me. Um, it might have been there, I didn't see it. Unfortunately, one back. <laughs> John Fox. Um, I just want to figure this out because it's also useful just in general to um know how to do it. Uh, Terracotic. We are trying to convert. Uh fov into f uh the link uh focus focal length um so i don't know why i had it i had mine blank uh so we can make it a smooth transition so it just means we want to do here is uh make this bigger go to 450 and at 450 we want to set the focal length to what I just copied, which is that. And if we save that, this should hopefully be perfectly smooth. Let's see. There we go. Smooth. Smoothness. Okay, Zion. There you go. That's how you do a sort of animation with sequencer. Obviously, this is playing at the start of a level. Um, you can do this, you know, when, anytime you want. You can just trigger it and disable input whenever you want. Uh, but yeah, that's how you do it, and uh, it uh, it works pretty well. Uh, Abir Dutta, hello, uh, nice to see you. Um, uh, it's nice to see a new person. Uh, by archive, do you mean have this up as a video on the? YouTube channel, then uh, yes, I'm going to leave, it's going to be left as an automatic update to YouTube as a video people can watch, um, because it's a combination of videos, uh, tutorials, hello! As, as Mr. Sky Blue's, uh, because that's your name, uh, <laughs> secretary, I have to apologize for his uh, likely, uh, butchering of your name there. A bit of data? Not that bad, I mean, it's probably bad, but, I mean, you know, so. um... <laughs> That's my secretary. I said my name was Oscar at the start, you know, by the way. Did you? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> and I almost said your name, but you said I can say it, but I haven't anyway. Mr. Terracotti. I um, am... I am actually... Uh, Doland Trumpo. Ah! <laughs> Not to be confused with Donald Trump. 
Um, <laughs> just in case anyone was no, no. thinking that, I'll be back. Yeah. Ah, of course. Okay. Righto. Hey, I said it right. Take that, Terracotic. I am too good. Thanks, <laughs> Um Yeah, so you can see that the transition. I'll just play it one more time. Uh, transition was completely smooth. Uh, obviously, the animation is amazing. It was just a test, though. Um, and also, another conclusion Sequencer is beautiful. Uh, but yeah, you can see that is very nice. So that is that done. And yeah, you, c you can obviously do this for any animation you want. Um, and you can also do it, of course, you can also do it uh, with the sequence. You can also make it so instead of having to set the camera location or whatever, or uh, you might, you want to use, you probably want to use rotation because you, know, you don't want the, you don't actually want the camera to be centered around like above his head. Uh, <laughs> Trumpo. Um, Donald Trumpone. Donald Trumpone, that's pretty good. Um, instead of doing that, you want to use, uh, uh, trigonometry, just, it's pretty easy. Just to calculate the actual angle you want it to be. Because you don't actually want it to be centered above his head or on his head. You want it to be centered, you know, on his shoulders or whatever. So you just use trigonometry to set the, uh, the rotation of the camera. Um. Instead of the height. So that's actually, let's just do that now. It's pretty easy. Uh, so what we just want to do, right? So if we open the person. So we know the length of the horizontal there is 350 because that's a target arm length. And we know we, we want it to be 123.7 whatever uh, centimeters above uh, the above the player's center. Uh, so we can just use some simple trigonometry, and I think this calculator has it, and it um, yes it does. Uh, open that. Uh, we can use some simple trigonometry. This is in case you're wondering, because I know it's very pretty. Uh, this is the uh, Google uh, calculator. Um, from Chrome, it's a Chrome uh, extension app sort of thing. App, not extension. Um, so we have 350. We know we want it. Uh, it's 350. The triangle base and height is that. So we want it to be uh, a rotation of uh, tan inverse of 120, whatever it is, over 350. So we just copy this number here, not the centimeters, obviously. We place it in there. Uh, Divided by, oh no, I have to do inverse sine and tan, whatever. Uh, also known as a tan. A tan. Okay, it looks like we have to type in the numbers first. So divided by 350 gives us a uh, number of that. <laughs> Thanks, Sion. <laughs> um, then if we a tan that, uh, it's in rads, so if we change it to degrees, and we tan that, and then a tan, what are you doing? Let's just do it again. That divided by 350 is that, if we have it in degrees, and a tan, 19.46 degrees. So if we put this back down to zero, and put it at 19.46 degrees uh, rotated on this axis, which is uh, color coded, obviously, so for green. So 19, I did not copy that, did I? Did I copy that? I did not. Uh, 120 degrees is quite a bit sharper than uh, 19.467. Paste that in there. It will do nothing. Oh, that's right. It is. Not rotating. Okay, bye, Zion. Uh, if you do not come back before half an hour away, then good night or good morning or whatever it is for you. <laughs> bye. Um, rotation is not changing. Rotation is not changing. Um, oh, it's using poor controller rotation. I think that might be the problem. Yes, that is the problem. Uh, zero. Change that to, oops, I deselected it. And make it negative. Uh, that is the right thing, and we'll move it. Hmm. Yeah, we'll leave it like that. Uh, however, this length will no longer be the right length. You, you'll notice, uh, obviously the, an the angle of the uh, of this is also no longer correct. You can see it's uh, put to the end. It's at the wrong angle, so it, we can also change that uh, by putting it to negative. There we go. 
save that. Um, so now we have that. Uh, you can see it's also a bit closer. That's because obviously 350, uh, when you rotate something, it doesn't say the same distance in any direction. It, it rotates, so it goes a bit shorter. So you can either move this camera, the the camera component, the uh, cinematic camera, uh, closer, which is what you'd actually do in a real uh, situation, because you obviously don't want to just change the uh, length of the distance of the camera away from the player every time you have an animation. Uh, and let's do that. I, I, I wasn't going to do it. Let's do that. It's not that difficult. Uh, so we have the third person, third person player. Uh, then this distance along. Uh, let's think. Uh, this is our 350 now, and we know the angle there, so we can calculate that. Sorry, I just have to say it out loud because it's untied. Because uh, it's 9:30 here p.m. Uh, we can calculate the horizontal distance behind it uh, with tan. So if I go, uh, sorry, I'm really tired. Uh, not tan, what I'm talking about. Cause, um, cause of that, uh, times 350, 329.9, that's pretty, that's really close to 330, so that's easy. <coughs> Set that to 330 on the sequence. So put this to 330, and that was Z, not Y. So 330 is the distance it has to be from Y, but the player is not at, uh, in X I mean, the player is at uh, uh, 750. So we need to set this location to neg uh, 50. Oh, no, 750. Uh, actually, we should just move it 20 forwards, shouldn't we? So was it 390? Oh, that's why I'm doing why. Uh, this we move it by twenty forwards, and that should be whoops, wrong one. And the Y is slightly different as well. So for that we use if we do uh if we divide that if we go. M back. Okay, cool. Um, if we go one hundred and twenty. Okay, I've got, to do, I've got to go backwards. Divided by 350. Then A cos of that. Then sine of that times 350. 116.64. Okay, so 116.64. The player is at that. Whoops, that is not what I meant to do. that to there and then we put that in uh, here plus calculator that should be it there we go okay and if we press play now it should be much better much nicer like it, it was still smooth but now it should be there we go. See now we've got the same uh and I'm having a the player control is stuffed up in a weird way. That's probably uh, an issue with the engine, not with that. I just play through it again because there's nothing I've changed that should have changed that. Oh wait, it's serious. <laughs> the third person player, where is that? The camera boom is uh, pitch, pitch, yeah, pitch. Whoops. Oh, you person. Uh, 
just saying a different value. Sorry to people who are watching this. There we go. Okay. Let's change all of those. And it still sets back to zero. Lovely. What's going on again? Now she's not rotating at all. That's that's great. Um, sorry, I'm just uh, looking at things. Very sorry to people who are watching this and in despair. It's not my intention to do this, but the game is not the game. The engine is not doing what I would wish it to do. Unfortunately. There we go. Um, what time are you cutting the stream off at? 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, for the folks watching at home, that's in 23, 23 minutes. minutes. Yeah, so this I'm has been your here. reminder Shoot. from Dolan Trumpo. Donald Trombone. Hey, I thought it was funny. Donald Trombone is better. Donald Trombone. <laughs> Sorry, people. I'm just trying to figure this out because it should be. No, no, it's not. No, 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 no. But I tell you, it's weird playing it with like this controls. Okay, that's not working then. Um. I faced this issue recently in one of my things I was working on, but I can't figure out what the, I can't remember what the uh, solution was. Uh, there's a VR version. It's interesting. Okay, let's try. Instead of that, we will. Uh, we will set the uh, rotation of the camera boom every time we do input. That's that's better. Rotation. Set relative rotation. Get control rotation. It is, and then we split this, and the only thing we don't want to change is the Y, because uh, that is not what we want, basically. No, we said that in the video. So I'm mumbling very, very, very a lot right now. Just, um, we don't want to set relative rotation, we want to set world local rotation. That world rotation. Set that up this time. Roll your, and then uh, get the world rotation. Uh, set that. I know this is a lot more complex than it was um, supposed to be. People, sorry. Very sorry, dear chap. Yes, this is annoying. Hmm. Oops, sorry, I just smacked the mic. Uh, sorry if anyone can delete all that. I did it recently. <clears throat> I'm going to look it up quickly. 
quickly. Other people? Yes. Sorry, people, very much, very much. Ah, oh, silly me. What am I doing? Uh, <laughs> we can leave this as using the control rotation. We just need to uh, on begin play. In fact, not on begin play. We will set it in the map. All right, we'll do it here. Uh, we will set uh, essentially play it. In fact, we will fairly input delay. We will get play a pawn and we'll cast to player what's called third person character if you have pure cast this is easier but it doesn't matter get uh, set control rotation there's a way to do it oh need to get the controller don't I that's right Sorry, people, this is not this, not this. Get player controller. Sorry, people, it's taking a lot longer than it should be, but I am just trying to. There we go. Okay, now split this. Plug that uh, there, and we need this. Sorry, that was a mistake on my part. Plug it in there, and then we set this to negative the road. That is not what I had. <laughs> uh, go into the player, get that camera boom rotation. Which I'll save that, and then set to zero. Which I'll save that, and then plug it in here. And that did not work. There we go. Okay. This should be flawless. Flawless, I dare say. Let's hope so. There we go. Flawless. Flawless, I dare say. Zolan, there you go. Finally, completed. Everything. Everything works fine. You can use this animations. Uh, <laughs> and, um, yeah, so basically, don't try and set the rotation in the player. That's a dumb thing to do. I, I was trying to do that, and I was just, I'm just too tired, I guess. Uh, you want to set the rotation after, in the actual animation. You want to set the rotation to what you actually want it to be, finally, because, um, obviously. Um, I don't know why. I just did it another way. Um, and so this way, you can play any animation you want animation you want and still have the player camera return to where you want it to be um yes uh you could also use uh something like it'd be an easy, even easier way to do it you could uh use snapping to objects you could probably do it really easily like that you could probably do something very easily like that um to uh, move the camera to exactly where you need it to be, the uh, cinematic camera, um, instead of doing the long-winded trying to figure out the uh, rotation and location via trigonometry sort of thing that I did. Um, but yes, you can see it works flawlessly finally. Um, so I'm happy with that. Um, does anyone have any things they would like me to... <laughs> Thank you, Zan. Uh, anyone have any things I'd like me to do in the last 15 minutes? Or just general questions. By the way, hi, Terracotta. Oh, hello. <laughs> just hearing you typing me in the background. Mm-hmm. Oh. Glad to say I like streaming. Oh, by the way, did you see that Abir Dutta said... Well, I didn't say it right then. But he said that I, I said it right the, when I said the first time. Yeah, yeah, I know. Bloody, I know, I saw. Bloody plenty of you, but... I wanted to make the secretary joke though, so that's what that was for. That's what I said to him. I beat up Dutta. As Dolan Trombone, secretary <laughs> secretary to uh, Sky Blue. Danger Dolan. Oh, I found out. I, I found out just before that one of those idiots from LMFAO, the, one of them's called something, and the other one's called Sky Blue. Without the E. 
Fantastic. Death. <gasps> death. Your sky blue is your no, sky death, blue. Death, death because Whoa. of the name. Hey, hating, public hating on public live stream. <laughs> public hating. Public what hating. If, what if LMFAO wants you to make an LMFAO video game? I would. Tutorial. Tutorial? And then they sue you for stealing all of their party rock money. I'd be like, stuff you. I Remember that song? Alright. Oh boy. Yes, it was terrible. Um. Yeah. Voice so, crack. No one has any questions or requests or anything? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my god, it's Sky yeah. Blue from Limafau. <laughs> um, yeah, if no one has any requests or questions or anything, then I don't know what I'll do. I'll figure out something at that point. I'll give you like a minute to uh, answer the. Uh, Request for requests, I guess. That's what we call it. Come on, bet. Oh, seven people are watching, James. James, damn it, I said it. It was eight. It was eight before. Oh no, you broke your own. <laughs> you broke your own code of thunder. <coughs> damn it. <coughs> I um, am the real uh, James from. Um, from LMFO. The famous James. From LMFAO. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's me. By the way, Terracotic, do you like... Oh, I'm Terracotic from LMFAO. <laughs> <laughs> James Terracotic. Um, do you like the uh, banner thing I made? I put at the bottom? Yes. Very nice. It's very nice. I've got another one. I'll show you the other one. I've got another one which is for videos. Oh! It gets rid of my, ca like, rid of my camera. And it's just... Oh! So pretty, so, so I love my sky blue color. So good, so good, pretty. In case you can't tell, because I have it everywhere. My, my, my. All right. So, would anyone in chat like us to answer your LMFAO questions? <laughs> Chopper guy. <laughs> 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 nice. Uh, what hmm? questions? Ask us all of your uh, LMFAO related questions. Yes, and we will answer them uh, we'll answer with them to the, the best, best of our, our sarcasm. <laughs> <gasps> uh oh! <laughs> <laughs> We're blitzing up again. <laughs> what's your What's your project, Zion? And where can I find it? His project, actually. Uh, his, yes, his project. Of course, of course. I can't believe I made such a mistake. Sheesh! Wow, that stream is more about your way project, behind. Your that stream is yeah, no, it, it it just lagged, pretty pretty good. It only just saw, it only just showed your uh, scene swapping. Yeah, yeah, I just, I just, I just, I just watched myself do the perfect thing with my fingers. It was a fade, and you were like, "Oh my goodness, Jesus, Jesus Christ, oh. James the Christ." Yeah. You did oh. it again. Yeah, I did it on purpose. <laughs> Name drop. Name drop. It, it, it says it says you're James from Terracotic in the in there, and I've already said my name is Oscar, so there's only one other person who's talking. Where does it say James from Terracotic? No, he says. Did I say that? I meant to say he, what, he said in, you're James in, in the description. I'm not from Terracotic. Terracotic is not a place. I didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> he says. James from Although Team it is a place James, your James from the, Team really Rocket. James from Team Rocket. That's what he said, That's and it. I got that confused with Terracotic. Uh, <laughs> doing a game but making, making words one v one online plus campaign or setup. Okay, can you send us any any inf information about it or a video or an image? Or you something? mean, make, did you typo making worlds or are you literally making words? Because if you're making words, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> like and like I project. Would throw my money at you. If I had any money, like project. What project. A good, what a good word. It's so useful in so many instances. Uh, yeah. I feel like project should uh, be part of the dictionary. Honestly, I should just implement that into society's, uh, you know, our, our very uh, Australian-speaking societies. Oh yeah, mate. Australia. Product. Australia, mate. Hey, mate. I'm working on a new project. <laughs> <laughs> Loved him for AX, mate. Yes. Anyway, um... Any... Yes. Videos? Links to anything, my friend? 
I, I know I've said that about a minute ago, so you'll see it in about ten seconds, and then you'll see me say it again after you've already told me. But um, oh, it's really confusing. You're blowing my mind. <laughs> Mate, get blown. <laughs> 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 this seriously, this YouTube live thing is so useless. It does not tell me any information. Zero watching. I'm on, I'm on YouTube gaming. Oh, bro. Yeah, I'm watching. Whereas from, you're in the dashboard, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. YouTube.com slash live dashboard. If you want to see what someone's channel looks like with the new Metro theme without swapping to it in Chrome, just go to gaming.youtube.com slash that person's profile. It's practically the same. Like, for instance, if you were to go to gaming.youtube.com forward slash terracotic, you would find me, but then everything would be pink. Because Metro. Oh, yes, it is very much. Oh, what is it? Material design, or what Me do they call yes, it? Yes, material design. Correct. Got it. Sorry, Metro is the Microsoft thing. Uh, no, actually, everyone calls it Metro, but theirs is actually called Modern UI. Whoa. So modern, bro. Dude. Dude, bro. <laughs> uh... Oh, that's cool. Gaming.youtube.com shows my live stream up in the, um, as the banner. Yeah. Yep. You can just watch it right there and in you your can, channel. You can, you can just scroll up into it. Yeah. <laughs> Get in all that goodness. Oh, that does cut off the bottom of it because it, um, it shows, you know, it's showing you 16.9 on, uh, less than 16.9. Zion, bro, you haven't sent us any links or anything yet. We've only got eight minutes left to go. It'll take you about a minute to get this message. I don't think he's saying... He's got links. He was just telling us what it is and oh, then asking. Okay, well, yes. If it's if it's words, like I said, I'd throw money at it if it's words. If it's uh, words, then but I don't have any money. Then it sounds like it'd be really good for like a uh, phone or something, like a casual sort of game with um campaign mode, huh? Yeah, something like that. If you're making worlds, that sounds a the, lot the more. The campaign mode is make is making me uh think it might be a typo. Tell us more about your revolutionary Zion Fox idea. Yeah, um, but if it's uh, by Zion Fox, <laughs> it's the, it's the, uh, it's the sequel to Nyan Cat. Um, what? Mind blow. Um, That's my favorite anime. <laughs> anime. Um, yeah. So, I I don't anime. if you mean making worlds, then tell us the style, because like, um, book of Avengers. See words on yours, words. I do not remember Bookworm Adventures, but that suddenly brought back a memory of some game that I played when I was like 7 or 8 or something on Apple Mac 3. If it was a 3, was it 3, three something, plus that plastic green one? <gasps> um, Guys, Sky Blue Studio subscribed to me. Oh, the bruh. real Sky Blue from Le Mafau. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was accidental. Goodbye, script. Goodbye. Um... I was used to okay, say I just googled Bookworm Adventures. Bookworm Adventures! So you have to spell words to achieve goals. I guess. Or Let me see this. Maybe. Let's Ooh, watch that's interesting. Dank, may videos. That's an interesting Bookworm style. Adventure Final oh, Boss. Alright, this video is spoiled for me, but you know what? Oh, interesting. That's very interesting. So it's like a, like a bookworm RPG. It's like a word RPG. Uh, I am, no, I, I have many hobbies in terms of computers and tech, Ar Birip. I, um, I am, I do real time in UE4. I do pre-rendered stuff in, um, you can do that in, in UE4 as well. I, I use Cinema 4D, um, for pre-rendered animations and stuff. Uh, but I haven't made any on this channel, no, nor any tutorials. Oh, you can see some of my really old ones that I made ages ago. On um, this channel, Skyby Studios. Check out the Terry Cardic intro. But uh, yeah, I made that ages ago as well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's not that bad. Um, but nothing particularly amazing has. I I've never nothing. I've never released any of my particularly amazing ideas or anything because I I don't have enough time to because pre rendered. Um, especially like because Cinema Forty like in UE Four you can create blueprints and stuff that um in editor spawn things you know like you can make erase and stuff and you can do that in like cinema 4d and obviously as well but it doesn't give you the same power like it's a lot easier to animate things in some way like not animate things but like to do particles and stuff it's in, in a lot of ways it's a lot easier to do that in ue4 than is um cinema 4d and stuff so i just find it easier and more fun to just do work in real time and make and make games generally 
Also, I'm working on a big game project right now as well. Um, I also do some some uh, amateur photoshoppy in terms of I do some good stuff in terms of UI design stuff like that, and then I do some amateur purposefully am amateur memes um, and moustache men. But uh, and otherwise, I'm mostly on this YouTube channel, especially I'm, I'm all pre-rendered. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Zion Fox, I really like the, uh, I, li I like the idea of a word RPG. I, I feel like there was a game on, like, DS or something that was like that, but I can't think of what it was. But yeah, it's a pretty cool idea. Casual link drop. <laughs> well, you've been talking for two and a half hours or something, so I think it's, I think it's, it's a fair for you to do it now. Cool. Well, we're very near the end of the stream, on And the, the links that I'm dropping uh, in the chat, the intros were actually made by Mr. Scablu. Yes, Scablu. Uh, from LMFAO. Um, yeah, from LMFAO. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, definitely get peoples. You can request any other uh, tutorials in the, um, on the channel via comments and or messages to me through Google Plus or YouTube. Um, and as long as they're not, um, super... You know uh, what? Thank you, Zion. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> as, <laughs> he appreciate. Um, as long as it's not, um, very specific to, like, one circumstance. Like, as long as it's not, as long as it's not like, um... How do I make the swords from Skyrim animate... In that, yeah, some I don't know. Like you can ask me, like make an inventory system. <laughs> you can, you, can, you yeah, you can, or... you can. Sorry, okay. You could be like, how do I make first person, uh, quick Combat. based attacks? Yeah, or something like that. You ask first me things person... that, yeah. things that are applicable not, to. How do I do the Skyrim? <laughs> yeah, like things that are applicable to loads of um, games and for different people. Um, but not things that are specific to like some like one person. Like, um. Someone asked me uh, today or yesterday to make a tutorial because I made the bi-directional door tutorial on how to make an interactive door that opens both ways. Um, they asked me to make uh, like the same sort of tutorial but with, where like a player hand reaches out and opens it and um, the door moves properly. And that is on the verge of being too specific. I'm still going to make it because it will cover um, animation techniques and interacting interaction um, animation techniques. You could honestly probably just get the point across by having a cube extend out and push uh, the door. Yeah, um, but um, but uh, that's on the very verge. Anything more like that is um, yeah, yeah. Our daughter, I um, the game project, the main one I'm working on right now. Uh, certain types of logic and certain features of it. Uh, I've made tutorials on ages ago before I actually even worked on it, started working on the game. Um, the, like for instance, one of them I made an instancing blueprint tutorial because uh, I was going to release a pack on Unreal Engine Marketplace, but I couldn't. I'm not good at. I, I'm I'm creative in my head, but I'm not good at like I can't. I'm not very good at um, creating messages or anything. So like or anything like that. So I couldn't come up with a really uh, good. Like example map for it, so I couldn't actually put it on the store. But I managed to roll on how to make instance instance static meshes um, with like settings, like you know, like making like very complex sort of thing. It was very good. Um, uh, but I'm when I reveal, I probably won't make tutorials. Like I'll make tutorials. Like many parts of the game, like with all games, are generalized things that I can make a tutorial on anyway. Um, but I'm not going to like specifically go into detail about my game itself. But I, yeah, I will reveal it at some point, and I'll go through parts of it. But um. Not like I won't go through my exact algorithm for um generation, it's a randomly generated infinite thing. I'm not going to go through my exact uh, algorithm for that because, first of all, it's huge. Um, second of all, because it's huge, it would take ages and ages and ages to go through properly. And third of all, because then you could make the game yourself and whilst um, like completely yourself without having to do anything, any proper thinking, which um, is not why I make tutorials. I don't make tutorials so people can see exactly how to do something and make tutorials so people can kind of learn how to do it so they can figure it out for themselves later because otherwise what's the point if you don't actually learn anything um you could probably do a dumbed down version of your uh, random generation oh uh, yeah I, 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 yeah I probably could do that um I guess 
and like player stuff. Um, <clears throat> and AI, I guess I can make some player. Although that was another pack I was going to release on Unreal Engine. <laughs> I'll get place. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, no, I'm not going to. Do a lot with the uh, pawn sensing in Unreal Four. Huh? You can do a lot of uh, basic AI with the pawn sensing, like enemy follow AI and stuff like that. Like yeah. we were doing with that particular project. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Um, but anyway, yes, that cut, that is the conclusion of the stream, and I had a very fun you should, time. You should conclude this stream by playing the uh, Dark Knight pre-rendered animation <laughs> that wasn't recorded in the pre um, in the in the render, but only uh, in the preview window or whatever. No, I'll play. I'll play one of my better ones. In fact, I'll actually. No, I will show. I will show a relevant one. I will show a. Um, I'm going to play an animation for no point. We've gone over the three hours now. I'm going to show this one. Um, because I actually use U4 for the particles. Because like I said, particles are easier in U4 than in most 3D uh, pre-rendered programs. So <clears throat> this video, they're pretty they're pretty bad because I, I had to do it really quickly. I had like a week to um, make the whole thing. Beyonder. Okay, I'm going to play it. Um, obviously, you can actually watch it in 1080p. Good quality. Um, on, the, on the YouTube channel itself. But um, I made this, and the particles uh, in it are using UE4. I, I pre-rendered it on a green background, and I used chroma uh, keying in Adobe Premiere to uh, get rid of the green and make it into orangey red. Premiere. And there's an ad. Oh. You're, you're a sellout. There we go. Long has man dreamed of life on other planets. Here we go. Life that he could talk to, learn from, and study. However, many scientists predict that although the existence Can of I ask why that and is so out of place? Because <laughs> it needed to fit Earth, and except study. Except for one place. Adception. <laughs> That planet, oh, that's uh, moon. In fact, it's spinning very, very quickly. <laughs> and that's not a moon. It's Earth. I'm talking about. Later on, it's the snow moon. Sky blue of LMFAO. Just it. Presents how to moon. Yeah. Beyond Earth. I made the music myself. You guys well, should go give this. You guys should. Yeah, I was gonna say nice music. <laughs> You guys should go give this video a like because it has a 1v1 happening right now. <laughs> and you can see uh, this whole thing here, this particles and the space in fact were both rendered in UE4. They're not great because like I said I only had a week, but... Um, and this, which is kind of terrible, but also kind of nice, but terrible. In future, you should probably give color grading a go. And mess uh, with the contrast because the the unlit side of the planet is still really bright. It's supposed to be. So like it it would look more dramatic if it was if the if you bumped up the contrast so that the brights are brighter and the darks are darker. Probably, but it was, uh, yeah, I guess. So. Beyond Earth. This summer. <laughs> in some places on the Earth. It, it's summer. All of the rover's equipment. I don't know where I was going with that. Well, it's a rocket ship again. Yeah. Because I'm seeing everything about a minute behind. Yeah. Also allowing the robot to traverse any terrain, even water. Video pauses, plays out for Terry Cardiff. <laughs> it must be funny for you watching, um, hearing me talk about something, then watching it like a minute later. I'm reacting to what you're saying a minute before I see what you're talking about. It's okay, here's, pretty, uh... here's the best bit. Whoa, it's a rocket ship. <laughs> Not what you're watching. So that we may unlock a secret universe. We already saw this rocket ship. <laughs> that wow, it is spinning really fast. Or is it or is that rocket ship moving really slowly and it's just sped the footage up? And there's my full name, people. Also yeah, it was in your uh, Unreal Launcher before. I know, it doesn't you can like that video's already up on my channel. Oh there's three videos on my name. Uh, also Also uh, why does the rocket ship, uh, still have all of its, uh, uh it, I don't forget the term, all of its body parts? Huh? 
because the rocket ship drops off pieces of its uh, of its body when it leaves the atmosphere and all that. Yeah. So the way that um, that mission was designed is um, it was launched and it had enough fuel. It it, it did it in, in periodic spurts, and then it circled around uh, the moon, and then it launched the uh, the little rover thing that I um that you could see in the um. Like, that was the 2D thing that was shown. Uh, you can see that, and, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'll be right back. Data. I can re remaster this more time. Um, I don't know if I still have the, uh, project file, so I'll see if I do. Because if I do, then I could, um, obviously. But I don't know if I still do. I have that one. Oh, I do have it. Do I have the project files there? I still have the project files. So, I could remaster this, and if I have time, then I will. At the moment, I'm pretty pressed with, uh... School. <laughs> Coming too late. <laughs> nice sound. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, um... I could remaster this, and I, I, I guess I could, as a... Actually, that would be a great way to do a sequencer tutorial. Um... Or to it do could a, be. uh... Random spaceship... Slash space sequence. Yeah, um, it'd be interesting in, in many ways, but it'd be cool. Um, All right, I have a challenge for you. Okay. Create uh, the Millennium Falcon or any other ship blasting off to hyperspace. So do the whole star stretching and then turning into like a vortex tunnel and that all that. That would be pretty awesome. Yeah, I've seen I've seen uh, like even even Blender animations for it can look pretty fantastic. To do it entirely in your I just, I just I just love the the effect of uh, light speed in episode seven. Yeah. Do you mean um? Do you mean like entirely in UE four, in a sequencer? Or do yeah, you mean that'd be pretty cool. It would be. That's a good idea. It, it'd be. It's a lot more specific than doing just. Hey, this is a sequencer tutorial. Yeah. But the is. stuff that you would do in it could still be applicable to other. Well, you have to go through a lot of related. a lot of post effects um and or settings mm. of the camera, which would be useful. Uh, you'd go through field of view as well. You do a little bit of particles. Because a lot, a lot of the um, yeah, it could be good. Yeah. It, it was a random idea. Anyway, it's ten or eight. You are eight minutes yes, over time. Thank this you. This is when the producers fire you. <laughs> this is when I get fired from LMFAO. As your secretary, <laughs> as your secretary and your producer and your uh, bandmate in LMFAO, I'm here by firing you. No, no, you're you're my rival in the um Pokemon people. Um, oh, pokey, pokey people. You, wait, are you, are you Ash catch them? All right, I'm done. Okay, Ash catch them. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for watching, especially the people who've been around for the longest, because obviously that's just it's hey, very cool to have people you who should, want to watch for this long. While you're still streaming, you should visit a channel, a cool channel. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> let's let's just. I just want to also, yeah, thank you very much to all those people uh, who have been watching. Um, Especially the ones who have been commenting, because there's been more people watching um, than have been commenting. So thank you very much to everyone who's been watching, as well as ones who've been commenting. Um, Talking in the chat makes everything a lot more fun. Pardon? Talking in the chat makes everything a lot more fun. It does. It makes it a lot more interesting. The whole interesting. point of this live thing. It is. Um, got a lot of those Microsoft ads. Uh, if we just go to YouTube.com. I also want to say thank you to my friend James Terracotic. Uh, <laughs> 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 Of, um, <laughs> of Terracotic, the YouTube channel. Terracotta, apparently. Yes, that's right. That's right. I live in Terracotic, um, my hometown. <clears throat> he makes Aussie gameplay goodness, as you can see right here. Uh, Aussie gameplay goodness. And, um, yes, it's very, Here... it's very nice of him to help. He makes, yeah, he makes YouTube gaming videos, although he does no game design stuff, which is why he is in this conversation. I don't, I don't do no, but he doesn't, he doesn't YouTube do game design stuff. Game design stuff on his YouTube channel. He makes uh, funny comedy videos of various games in various styles, including David Attenborough memes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, thank you to him. Thank you to all you watching and commenting. And uh, yes, um, not much else to say. Uh, we'll probably do this at some point again soon because this is fun. <laughs> Shout out to to Zion and Zombies guy for being around. For very much. You've been around for most ages. Of the stream. Thank you very much for um being so interested in my small channel. And thank you for 500 subscribers, everyone. It's so cool. It's so cool to um get 500. 
Um, it's like a it's like a huge one step like... closer to a, to a million. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because I didn't diamond I didn't... play button. Here yeah. we go. Because <laughs> I didn't do anything for um for any other milestone. Actually, I think I did something for fifty. I can't remember what it was though. But um, yeah, I didn't do anything for any of the previous ones because although you know, again, hundred subscribers and two hundred subscribers and every subscriber really is is a cool achievement. Oh, um, and mass mass. And Mazmaz, yes, him too. He's been around for ages. He's, um, yes, uh, but then yeah, so it's it's very it's very cool to finally reach like 500 because 500 is like a very it's like the first huge milestone, in my opinion, because it's like I don't know it's just very cool, especially considering I haven't been able to post very many videos recently, and my nose looks huge in this uh, camera. <laughs> um, it's not just the camera. From the, from this particular perspective, it looks huge. It, like it doesn't look that big when I look in the mirrors. Um, Yes, thank you very much to everyone. Um, and I really don't want to stop. That's why I'm procrastinating so much and pressing the stop streaming button. Uh, any time frame next stream? Uh, it'll probably be... Uh, if it's not in a month, then it'll be a long time away. <laughs> um, if it's not in a month... There'll probably be the uh, standard announcement videos, though. Yeah, there'll definitely be an announcement video if and when uh, the next... Not if and when. When the next one happens. Um, if it's not within the next month... Uh, then it will probably be uh, in two months in my next... Then assume something went horribly wrong. Yeah, and, uh... yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's probably it's probably in like within a month or in a month. Uh, if not, then probably a couple months because stuff is getting very difficult in terms of my education currently. Um, but yes, thank you everyone. And I will... Stop... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I will stop procrastinating now. Thank you, everyone. LMFAO, coming too late. <laughs> oh. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, Dr. Nick. Thanks, Zan. And thanks, Adir. And thanks, Zombies Guy. And thanks, Mazmaz. And thanks, Chopper Guy, for that one comment. And thanks, uh... <laughs> Best of luck chopping. <laughs> to Tarek. Tarek <laughs> for helping host this video with me. Thank you very much. Bye.